I know they're excited to really show what they can do uh, this fall. So uh, Jose Medina, of course, back as the head coach for the LP Cavaliers. They made the playoffs in 2019. First time LP had tasted the postseason, I think, at that time in like a decade. And they lost to the eventual state champion, Rochester. Last year, LP would have made the playoffs in the spring, or if there was a fall season, one would think. But uh, they're looking to get back to it this year in 2021. We'll be following some other games tonight. This is week one of the new high school football season. And uh, Hall is hosting Orion over on 99.3 WNJK. St. Bede home to Sherrard. Mendota home to Erie Prophetstown. Fieldcrest at Aurora Christian. Ottawa at Sandwich. Princeton home to Rock Ridge tonight. Streeter hosting East Peoria. And there's also some people play Woodstock High and Woodstock North later this season. So uh, we'll get a new look at uh, a new team next week in Metamora at LP, and then later in the season will be games against Woodstock High and Woodstock North. We're going to take a break, and uh, we'll bring you our coach's interview with Jose Medina. Got to sit down with the coach yesterday afternoon and picked his brain as we uh, head into the season opener just minutes away, LP and Morton on 103.9 WLPO. you've been practicing have you guys really been ramping up things uh, heading into the opening kickoff you know the, especially with this heat advisory that we we've been trying to uh, adjust our schedule you know the, um we were practicing indoors a little bit uh the rain kind of hit us so that kind of put a damper in it too so, as well so we're we're trying to adjust to the heat and yeah i mean you, you you're just trying to get the kids ready but i think uh after about two and a half weeks of just being up on each other they're ready to hit somebody else so i'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what these guys can do this week talk about the, the opponent the morton potters uh, I know you guys uh, went there a few years ago. It was a really close game. Actually, the last two times you played them were really competitive games. They played a really good conference to the Met Illini, and you'll see another Met Illini team next week with Metamora. What are you expecting from this Morton team? You know what? They have uh, they run a power game. They want to run, run down uh, straight down the hill. Uh, they got a stud returning uh, running back coming back. So he's he's um, he's one of the guys that we're keen on this week, and you know that's kind of like our, our MO on, uh, on uh, as far as defense-wise. If we can hold them under a certain, a certain amount of yards then you know now we now, now we're going to try and maybe make them a little bit more one-dimensional but uh definitely yeah i think uh you know they, they they still come out ready to play as you said you know we played them tight the last two uh two times we played them just couldn't put enough points on the board to, to uh to scratch out a victory but uh you know definitely yeah i agree uh, it, it's gonna be it's, it's gonna be a dog fight i think those, those guys are gonna be ready to play uh, you know i think our, our young men are ready to go to as well talk about uh you know you're coming off an unbeaten uh, spring season you know five and oh and you had one game taken away due to some issues uh, with health and so forth. Uh, have you seen the uh, carryover as far as confidence uh, with the coaches and the returning players? Oh, definitely. I mean, that's kind of our that's kind of what we've been trying to instill in, in our guys. You know, we have told them, hey, let, this spring was is over now. Now it's it, it's your time. It's your time to set set the tone for for this football program. Um, set the tone. Make your own legacy. And that's kind of the, what, what we've been preaching to them. And, and they've they've. Uh, They've taken pretty good, you know, aim towards reaching those goals too this year. Uh, starting jobs uh, were most of your uh, starting positions, your starting lineup decided a while back, or are you still having some positions where they could be uh, wide open? No, I think I think our offensive line is still is, is pretty set, um, you know, and of course your quarterback position is, is set with Sean, and you know uh, we've got you know we got a variety of guys that can uh, can do some special things uh, on the offensive side. Defensively, we're we're going to try some new things out and and try some di different guys uh in different positions that we felt that did pretty well for uh 
uh, for our practices and stuff. So you know, it's it's going to be a uh, it's going to be kind of like a trial and error in a way uh, with with defense and putting guys in in certain spots. But you know, I think I think for now, I think we're pretty set on both sides of the ball, and I think we got some decent backups as well um, to to help if if injury happens. I know uh, coaches don't usually like to look at the rankings and so forth, but as fans and broadcasters, it's always neat to see. I don't know if you saw, but the the first rankings came out. You guys were getting votes in 5A and, of course, finished last year uh, in the rankings. Again, I know what matters most is wins and losses on the field and playoffs, but that's still got to be nice to know that statewide the LP is getting some recognition. It is, and I've I've been a part of teams at LP where we got ranked. It's kind of a a good thing and a bad thing in a way, but, uh, you know, I don't really pay too much attention to that. I just, you know, I'm I'm all about these kids going out there and just playing and competing and, and, you know, if, if, if... if we do what we have to do uh, on a weekly basis, then we should be uh, victorious. Last thing for you, Coach, as always, uh, how's the uh, team looking as far as uh, the injury front? Uh, doing pretty good? Not bad. Um, we got some kids uh, banged up, but uh, Esteban Alfaro is going to be uh, a guy that's going to be uh, not playing this week. But other than that, I mean, I think we're, we're, we're pretty solid and, and ready to go. No, no, no serious injuries. Well, let's hope to keep it that way, and uh, let's hope to get this season started and move the winning streak, I guess, to six in a row tonight. Okay, that's that's the game plan. Once again, that was LP head coach Jose Medina. Yeah, thanks a lot to yeah, Jose thanks a lot Medina. Thanks a lot to Jose Medina. I talked with me yesterday, me yesterday at, uh, at LP High School. LP High School. And, uh, the and, uh, the Cavaliers. On the road here tonight the against Morton, we're, we're getting close to the coin toss. Coin and this year the, home, the, the coin the toss is brought to you by Hometown National Bank. Tonight's coin toss Tonight's is brought to you by Hometown National, National Bank. Bank. Don't leave your financial future, your financial future up, to a coin toss. up to a coin toss. Let the folks at Hometown Let the folks National, National Bank help. Bank so, uh, help. We'll see who, so, uh, we'll see who I would assume. I only got one LP coming out. LP has four senior captains. Mike and I have the coin toss. The captains this year are the Cavaliers. For the Cavaliers, uh, Sean, uh, Whitfield, Sean Whitfield, Chris Swain, Chris Swain Will Doherty, Will Doherty and Aiden Van Duzer, uh, uh, four standout uh, seniors. Stand yep, seniors. Absolutely. We've got a absolutely. lot of playing time, of playing last, time year, so last year. Uh, LP will obviously be leaning on them to uh, be successful uh, tonight and tonight this season. And, this season. and we're going to take a, another we're gonna break. Take a, when, another we come break back, when we come back, we're going to give you our give you keys to the game. We'll also give you the injury status update. We'll talk about that here. Coach Medina, Coach Medina touch on the uh, injury, uh, injury status update, and we'll uh, and tell you we'll, uh, about, again, what other games we're going to watch, gonna watch tonight, tonight, and get you set for the opening set. kickoff the opening just kickoff about eight, eight minutes away or so. Player, so. L.P. Morton L.P. from Morton High School, High School kickoff of the, the 2021 season, season on 103.9 WLPO. Hi, this is John with Elite Seamless Gutters. If you need your house painted today, or you need the interior of your house painted, call Elite Seamless Gutters out of Spring Valley. We can take care of all your painting needs. We have high-tech spray machines that we come out, we power wash the house first, we clean everything, and then we come in and we spray it, or we roll it, whatever you would like. At Elite Seamless Gutters, we can take care of all your painting needs. If you need one bedroom painted, five bedrooms painted, or the whole inside of your house painted, call Elite Seamless Gutters out of Spring Valley at 663-8364 and get your entire house painted today by Elite Seamless Gutters out of Spring Valley. We can take care of all your painting needs. All you got to do is pick the phone up and call us at 663-8364 and we will come out and get you a free quote today for all your painting needs. Call the best. Call Elite Seamless Gutters out of Spring Valley and get your painting project done today. That's Elite Seamless Gutters in Spring Valley. 815-663-8364. Listen where Wherever you go, FM 1039. Jeremy Aiken, Mike Porter, back here at Morton High School. And the Cavaliers won the coin toss, the hometown National Bank coin toss, and chose to defer. Let's go ahead and uh, talk about the uh, keys to the game, the Jeff Perry Buick Pontiac GMC keys to the game jeff perry is proud to sponsor the lp keys to the game if you're looking for a new or used vehicle or need service see why jeff perry customers come back again and again jeff perry buick pontiac gmc in rochelle peru and online too and partner we talked about breaking this down into two different keys on offense uh, we're thinking the key to the game is starting with arguably the most important position on a football team at quarterback obviously a very talented quarterback graduated with tyler hartman 
Right. Now he turns the reins over to uh, another very talented player, Sean Whitfield. So we're thinking if Sean, as a senior, can take a hold of this team, be the leader, yep. LP could go a long way. Yeah, they certainly can. Obviously, Sean uh, is a great athlete, uh, multiple sport athlete at LP, and uh, he came in one game last year when uh, Tyler got hurt and did a did a decent job. Um, I know he's very athletic and a strong kid, so I think uh, LP's offense is going to be uh, uh, hinging on him to do well this year. On defense, uh, LP obviously was tremendous on defense last year. They had uh, two or three shutouts that I can remember and only ended up giving up, I think, 10 points per game. But uh, they're going to be have to be at their best tonight because Morton has, a, uh, I would think, an all-state quality running back in Seth Glatz. He's a senior. And uh, looking at his spring numbers, I mean, yes. unbelievable Numbers that would be good for a full season full for anybody, season for sure. let alone uh, just a five- or six-game season. Glatz ran for almost 1,200 yards last year and 16 touchdowns. He had 1,000 yards in the final three games. You heard Coach Medina mention the, the running back. So I think, Mike, one of the keys to the game for LP is you're probably not going to contain him. Right. He's going to break off some big runs, but you just got to con contain him at least and try to make some other players beat you. Right, because you cannot allow him to run unfettered all around the field for the entire game. Like you said, he's going to get his runs, but he's just got to uh, – defense has got to slow him down somehow because that's uh, some impressive stats for uh, so few games. We're going to take our final break, and when we come back, we're going to get set for the opening kickoff of the game. Mike will have our weather of the game as well. You're listening to LP and Morton Football on 103.9 WLPO, watching on HD at our YouTube Star Rock Media channel as well. Be back in moments. Cavaliers and Potters from Morton High School. Okay. If you've had an accident, LaSalle Body and Fender will help you score the best deal in auto body, fender, collision, and dent repair. LaSalle Body and Fender's been in the Illinois Valley providing excellent auto repair for three generations, and they work with all insurance companies. When your car gets banged up, call LaSalle Body and Fender, and you can call them for 24-hour towing, 223-0598. These are a couple of great teams, but the real super groups, like ACDC, Death Leopard, and Journey, play after the game. 1039 WLPO. Star Block News, Talk, and Classic Rock. Jeremy Aiken and Mike Porter back here at Morton High School as uh, the national anthem was just done by the Morton High School band. And we're about ready for the opening kickoff. The opening kickoff for tonight's game is brought to you by Eureka Savings Bank. Since 1885, Eureka Savings Bank has been proud to be a part of this community, helping people just like you. Eureka Savings Bank member FDIC. And it is a hot one, there's no doubt. And I know it's been hot all week, Mike, in the Valley, yes. and it's no different here in Morton. And tonight's uh, weather update is brought to you by Town & Country Services. Whether it's hot, cold, dark, or light, Town & Country Services is doing whatever it takes 24-7. Go to townofcountryservices.com to find out more. And, partner, if you mind doing the honors, we kind of gave away the, uh, the the main summary. Yes. It is hot. Yes. Uh, we It did not get any cooler as we came down to Morton, of course. It is a balmy 86 degrees here at kickoff, and it probably won't drop below 80 by the time the game is over at 9, 930. So uh, kids are going to have to stay hydrated, drink a lot of fluids, water, and uh, hopefully they get through this game without any cramping. Hopefully we get through the game yeah. without any cramping as well. So, yeah, we had uh, – I can't complain. we got a nice setup here in the press box. But when we walked into our section of the press box, we could tell that they probably hadn't opened the windows or the door for this specific part of the press box yes. all summer long. Yes. And, this, uh, uh, the oven is, was turned up to about 350 here in our <laughs> little room here. So so we're uh, we're almost set for football as the, uh, the Morton Band is out playing the Morton Fight Song. They're waiting for their potters to come out on the field as we're probably just about two minutes away from the game. LP and Morton, again, the Cavaliers on the road tonight, but uh, have a friendly schedule this year with uh, five home games, only four road games. 
So you get this one into books. You only yep. got three. Uh, in fact, we got a three-game homestand. Yep, three games in uh, a row. Coming up after this. Right. And it'll be interesting, too, uh, because we're going to see some teams that we have not seen in probably some, some time, obviously, Metamora next week. But then we're going to go to the uh, Woodstock and play Woodstock North. So that'll be a little bit different uh, heading up there to see uh, – you know, Woodstock and uh, possibly Punxsutawney Phil, perhaps. Yeah, and that's a, it's a new setup this year with the yes, conference. Right. I, I asked Coach Medina, was this a one-year thing? And he wasn't sure yet oh, if it's just okay. a one-year setup or not. Uh, LP does not play Plano or Rochelle. That's the change. Right. So in exchange for Plano and Rochelle, they like you said, Mike, they have Woodstock High and Woodstock North this year. So. Right, so maybe they'll switch out Mor Morris and another conference foe. I'm sure they'll keep Ottawa on the schedule. Right. I'm sure that's not going to go anywhere. So You'd um, hope not. I wouldn't mind having a break from Caneland and Sycamore every would, now and then. But. Yep, <laughs> that's <laughs> but right. But, hey, last year showed you with LP beating Caneland, beating Morris, we all hope that LP has reached a level now, folks, where they can play with anybody. Right. And uh, we should uh, – I mentioned it to the coach – and Jose, to his credit, took the typical coach response about rankings. Uh, the Cavaliers are honorable mention in the initial Associated Press uh, rankings in Class 5A. Now, remember, last year they finished in the top yes, 10. Yes, they did, yep. Uh, with their wins at the end over Morris and Caneland. So right, they were just behind Sycamore. Um, so yeah. know, that would have been the, the conference championship game there if LP right. played or Sycamore. So, um LP is uh, going in the right direction for sure. Yeah, the arrow is pointing up for the Cavalier program. We're glad you could join us as we are set for the opening kickoff. Again, brought to you by Eureka Savings Bank, Jeremy Aiken, Mike Porter on 103.9 WLPO on the FM, AM 1220. You can also download the WLPO app on your Android or Apple phone. If you ask Alexa nicely on uh, your smart speaker, you can also listen to us through an Alexa and, of course, great HD video again this year. Just go to YouTube and search Starved Rock Media. Subscribe to our channel, and you'll be able to watch high-definition quality video of each LP game, Home and Away, Zach Shaw, and uh, Aaron Pelican uh, behind the camera tonight. So I want to welcome them back. And we are about set for football. Of course, LP's kicker, Drake Weber, graduated. So now the kicking duties are turned over to Joey Shepard, a senior. Joey got in last year because of injury, yep, and right. we saw him in uh, warm-ups, Mike, right. and he was kicking yeah, pretty long field goals. Yeah, he was kicking 35-yard field goals pretty uh, easily, so it uh, looks like he does have the leg. He's got a big uh, feet to fill between uh, Weber's graduation, so um, we'll see what Joey can do this year. So here we go, the Eureka Savings Bank kickoff. Shepard with the approach, and the kick is up. It's going to be taken at about the 15-yard line by Morton. They fake the reverse handoff. He's at the 25, and a nice oh, fumble. There's a fumble on the play. A fumble, and the Cavaliers have it. The Cavaliers have it on the opening kickoff. It looked like number 44, Luke Murtis. And, Mike, I think Luke made the initial tackle as well. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. That's a great play by the senior linebacker uh, being out there on special teams. So, great uh, start for the Cavaliers, and we'll see what they can do. They're inside the 20 here, so... Uh, very exciting uh, start for the Cavs. Opening kickoff, Luke Murtis was going to make a tackle and then went ahead and stripped the ball. It popped out, and Morton has turf just like LP, so the ball moves around a little bit more, and the Cavaliers are in business starting their first drive of the night at the Morton Potter 19-yard line. Sean Whitfield under center for the Cavaliers. Matt Carrico behind him. And, oh, we got a flag on the first play of the game. It looks like it's going to go on Morton offsides. Oh, wow, okay. So that'll be a five-yard walk-off against the Morton Potters. The wingbacks right oh. now for the Cavaliers. Corey Walker is out there. Referee's got to turn around. There he goes. <laughs> <laughs> so LP already in the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. Illinois Valley Credit Union now offering Visa cards with interest rates as low as 9.9%. If you live, work, or worship in LaSalle, Bureau of Putnam County, you can become an IVCU member. See more now at IVCU.com. Back in action, and Whitfield hands it off to Carrico up the middle. Matt got maybe a yard or two. Matt was outstanding. In fact, he was the leading rusher for the Cavaliers a year ago. 
Yeah, he uh, he really showed uh, some stuff last year. It was uh, pretty exciting to see Matt come out uh, almost nowhere, honestly. So uh, he's going to be one of the star running backs this year. He probably would have had 1,000 yards a year ago if there was a nine-game season. Whitfield under center. And another handoff to Carrico, and the pile moves forward down to about the six-yard line of Morton. So that's a first down for the Cavaliers. Uh, Carrico just needed two yards, and Matt got plenty for the first down. So the Cavaliers move deeper in the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone, searching for our first Town & Country Services touchdown of this young season. Carrico in the backfield, split out in the backfield is Joey Story and Corey Walker. A flag flies as they go to Carrico again. Let's see if this goes against the Cavs. Might be illegal motion. Second flag thrown already. Oh, looks like to be on the Cavs. So let him move him back five yards. It's a first and goal situation for LP, and it is a false start on the Cavs. So uh, both teams, little rocky start with the penalties. Morton with a turnover, and we've barely played a minute. 10.48 to go here in the first quarter. No score, but the Cavaliers deep in the Ivy Credit Union red zone thanks to the Luke Murtis tackle, force fumble, and recovery on the opening kickoff. So it'll be first and goal now at the 8 or, uh, no, actually at the 13-yard line. Uh, it was, it yeah, was at it was the like 8. 12 or 13, right? Yep, first and goal at the 13. Whitfield under center. Sean's going to oh, keep it, it running. Like he's, got it. he's got some room. 10, 5, turn in the corner. Big hit. Reaches he's for the up. end zone. And they're going to say he was out of bounds. Oh, he just stepped out of bounds. It looks like the 2-yard line. Yeah, Whitfield, my partner, Mike, saw that right away. He had a nice edge to the line there, had a lot of running room. It was him and Corey Walker running the option, and Whitfield turned it up, got 11 yards on the carry, so to be second down in goal now at the two-yard line of Morton. LP looking to get on the board. They were shut out when they played here in Morton two, in, yep, in 2018. Years ago. Yeah. There's a handoff. Yep, Carrico, he's in. touchdown. Carrico is in for the touchdown. They're pretty much untouched. Matt Carrico, a two-yard touchdown run. And just like that, the Cavaliers jump ahead six to nothing thanks to the uh, fumble recovery on the opening kickoff. That one uh, gets punched in at 10:26 of the first quarter. Matt Carrico did a lot of the work there, but a nice run as well by Sean Whitfield. And now we'll see the PAT attempt by Joey Shepard. Snap oh, is high, high the hold is down, oh, it's blocked. Yep, that's going to be a tough one to make when the snap is so high like that. So the PAT is no good. And again, that was a uh, opening touchdown for the Cavaliers, brought to you by Town & Country Services, doing whatever it takes 24-7. Plumbing, electric, heating, and cooling for over 100 years. Go to townandcountryservices.com to find out more. And that extra point was a uh, Financial Plus Credit Union extra point attempt. They belong to you, and that's the plus at Financial Plus Credit Union in Peru, Ottawa, Mendota, Morris, and Diamond. Well, let's take a, a look at our first Subway scoreboard update. Yeah, I was going to say, I've got some scores coming in from yeah, the ahead, uh, radio station, their headquarters. Uh, we uh, as, After one, Hall is up 7-0. to zero. Um, After one, Princeton is leading Rock Ridge 14-10. to 10. And with 2.41 left in the first quarter, St. Bede 29, Sherrard 0. So the Bruins off to an early, early big start against Sherrard. Uh, Hall is playing Orion Thank on you, uh, yeah, 99.3 WAJK, our sister station. So uh, we'll look to try to get uh, Mendota and Ottawa. Fieldcrest scores as well. Some games probably just now kicking off if they haven't already. And, uh, man, uh, LP got on the board here quickly if you're just joining us. The Cavaliers lead 6 to nothing, and here is the kick from Shepard. It's a short one, end over end, and it'll take a bounce inside the 20. And nope, they're going to do, gonna the, do the, reverse the reverse this time, and he's going to be brought down. LP was not fooled at all there as he's tackled inside the 20. It looked like Ethan Bell with the yeah, tackle for the Yeah, they tried to the do Cavaliers. that fake reverse on the first kickoff, and uh, <laughs> that's where the fumble happened. So they went ahead and tried it this time, but not successful. Good coverage by the Cavs. 
So well, now we'll get a look at uh, Morton and their star running back, Seth Glatz. They were uh, supposed to get the, the first possession of the game, but they fumbled the opening kickoff. So we'll see what LP's defense has in store as well. Whitfield and Hunter are the safeties. Defense definitely a strength a year ago for the LP Cavaliers. Yeah, and we'll see uh, number 20 uh, called yeah. upon right pretty quick, I'm sure. He's the lone back in the backfield. Morton comes out in a spread offense. They hand it off, and there he goes up the middle. Wow, he's got speed to burn, gets ahead of Whitfield, and Sean brings him down at the 30-yard line. That's a 53-yard run doing a quick math there. Wow. Wow, right away, Seth Glatz. And luckily, LP has guys like Whitfield and Hunter as the last line of defense, or Glatz would have went all the way. Yep, the uh, the chain gang can't even keep up with them. They're going quick. Hand off again to Glatz, and this time he's brought down, but still a positive there gain. There might be a penalty flag. I can't tell there's something on the... Nope, looks like if there was, they picked it up. Yep. On the tackle for the Cavs was Will Doherty. Yeah, like Mike mentioned, the chain gang hasn't even gotten set up yet. In fact, there he goes. And I say he moved the first down. I think they're trying to catch up. The referee uh, signaling a, an official's timeout, I think, to try to get things back in order here. Yeah, maybe he flew through the flag just to slow things yeah. down a sec. So a four-yard gain by Klatz. Again, he had some gaudy numbers. In the spring season, Seth Glatz, the lone back in the backfield once again. They're going to pass, throwing out to the right side. He's at the 20, the 15, turns it inside, the 10. Knocked out of bounds inside the five-yard line. Looked like Whitfield was there for the tackle, along with Antonio Rodriguez for the Cavaliers. But uh, Morton threatening to get right back on the scoreboard here. Yeah, and we're seeing a hurry-up offense for the Potters. First and goal at the seven. They hand it off right up the middle. Not much there that time for Glatz. Looked like Chris Swain, who was fantastic at linebacker last year. Got to believe he's probably going to be an all-conference linebacker for the Cavaliers. Yeah, he was one of the standouts, of course. No gain on the play. No gain on the play. Second down and goal from the seven. Second and goal at the LP7. So finally, everybody can kind of take a break, a, a breath here. <laughs> We're down to 8.45 to go in the first. Six to nothing LP, but Morton has the ball at the Cavaliers' seven-yard line. Quarterback is Lane Kaufman. He's going to pass, looking over the middle. Touchdown, oh. Morton. He was, that receiver was wide open there. Yeah, the Hudson Strube, a tight end, got wide open. Just a little toss over the top of the line. And we got ourselves a uh, tie ball game. A seven yard touchdown pass at 834 in this first quarter, less than two minutes after the Cavaliers got on the board first. And here is the PAT attempt coming up for the Potters. Six to six ball game with the extra point right here for Morton. Snap is good. The hold is down. The kick is up, and it is and good. That is no good. No good too. Or no good, huh? Yeah. Wide right. right. Jackson Weber. Oh wait a minute. He just oh he changed it. Now now it was good. Up. Oh. Nope. They Are just haven't taken it off the scoreboard. So. All right. So it was no good. Scoreboard is that correct? Well, it's the first game for the scoreboard operator yes, as well. Yes, so. that's true. Brand new scoreboard. He's just got to get used to it. <laughs> Six to six ball game, LP and Morton here. Uh, man, a lot of action in the first three and a half minutes of <laughs> yeah. this ball game. Both teams have put a score on the board. The biggest single play yardage wise, uh, the 50 plus yard run for Morton star running back, Seth Glatz. The biggest play for LP was the uh, Luke Murtis force fumble and recovery, which set up LP inside the Morton 20, and Matt Carrico finished the drive off with a two-yard touchdown run. Back deep for the Cavaliers, Trayvon Hunter, and it looks like uh, Ozzy Hernandez, number 17 and 34 for the Cavaliers. 
Both are uh, game-breaking type players. They could. They yeah, could they definitely, definitely break both one. have uh, speed uh, to burn there. Ozzy is a standout basketball player also for LP. And here is the kick. Yep. Pretty good kick. Uh, Hernandez backpedaling inside the five. Ozzy's at the 10, looking for blocks, 15, 20. And that's where he's brought down, right at the 20-yard line. So a kick return of about 15-plus yards for Ozzy Hernandez. And uh, LP's offense back on the field. 8.27 to go in the ball game, or 8.20 in the ball game. 8.27 to go in the first quarter. And LP and Morton not, uh, knotted up at six apiece here. Opening night of fall 2021 football. Darkness starting to settle in here. I don't think the temperature has yeah, dropped all that much. Off. Whitfield back under center for the Cavaliers. In motion is Walker. They go right back to Carrico, and Matt gets it out to about the 25-yard line. So that's a solid five-yard gain, and you'll take that on a first down. Absolutely. Matt Carrico, a workhorse last year and a workhorse early on for the Cavaliers. Into the game is Mason Lynch bringing in the play for the Cavaliers. Checking out is Corey Walker. Interested to see more of Corey Walker this year. He yes. came on the middle of last season, mm -hmm. had a big run against Morris. See what he has to bring to the table. There's Carrico again. And Matt gets it out to about the 29-yard line, just shy five, of the first down. The so it'll be third down and one for the Cavaliers. Nothing fancy. No, they're doing their normal uh, Cavalier offense here so far. Nine yards on the last two carries for Carrico. Walker back in, Lynch back out. It's third and one. Let's see if they go to Carrico or maybe Whitfield calls his own number at quarterback. Third down and one for the Cavs at their own 29-yard line. In motion is Walker. Whitfield doing a little hard count. Morton not biting. And here is... Oh, Carrico got stuffed Carrico was stopped. No gain on the play. Tackle made by Seth Glatz, wouldn't you know it. The star running back for Morton got in there. And uh, let's see if uh, the Cavaliers are feeling like gamblers here. I don't see any sort of putt uh, oh. team going in, so it looks like they're going to be going for it on fourth down. This would be something. So you'd be at your own 29-yard line with uh, six and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Perhaps Whitfield maybe will just try to do a hard count. They'll call a timeout and punt. Let's see. Fourth down and one. Big play early in this game, obviously. Oh, LP's Whitfield's going for it. Whitfield's got first yep, down easily. easily. First down. Nice play call. Sean Whitfield just followed his big guys, including Aiden Van Duzer. And uh, also there on the line for the Cavaliers was Creed McCormick, number 59. Yeah, the interior line there helped, uh, did a really jo good job for uh, opening up that little hole there for Sean. And that's awesome to put confidence into your big guys up front just like that early yep. in the game. First time into the game tonight is uh, Malik Madrigal. Malik had a big time uh, catch yep. in the meet the Cavs night. So interested to see uh, Malik as a wide receiver weapon for the Cavs. Uh, Whitfield's going to keep it. Sean turns it up and doesn't get much. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage and uh, the tackle made by all everything Seth Glatz for Morton. They try to run away from him. You got it. Yeah, they give Whitfield a, yeah, a couple yards. That's a nice spot for Whitfield out to the 35-yard line of LP. Cavaliers haven't, haven't attempted a pass yet, so we'll see what uh, they come up on second and long. Second down and nine for the Cavs. And there's a hand goes free. He's Cal good. 50, Cal 40. going to go. He's better. And they're going to. No, oh, he's tripped he up. Tripped up. Had one man to beat. And that Morton Potter player tripped Carrico up just outside the 15-yard line. Micah Wong uh, just barely hit his shoes, 
shoelaces there and knocked Carrico down at the 17-yard uh, line, but that was a nice game. So Carrico, who's usually just a hard runner for a few yards up the middle, a huge gain there and puts LP back in the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. 47 yards for Carrico on that wow. play. Has to be his, uh, I don't remember having that long of a run in the spring, so his career long. And, yeah, and he went right up the middle too, so. I imagine that's the backup to Carrico. It give Matt a breather. Indeed, that handoff was to Chris Swain. So Chris getting some uh, action on offense. And a three yard gain by Chris, so hey, that, that's good on first down. Give Car Carrico might be uh, taking the rest of this drive off. This warm of a night. Counting down to four minutes to go in the first quarter. It's six to six. When whistles blow. Oh, someone's timeout. Looks like an official's timeout, maybe oh, an equipment timeout. Someone's helmet, maybe. Yep. A I did get a, a score update uh, in the second quarter. Ottawa 21, sandwich zero. So Ottawa, the wow. Pirates are starting off hot. So we're ready back in action. For the Cavaliers, Whitfield under center. And Sean's going to keep it, getting a few blocks. Oh. And he's tackled just outside the Morton 10 yard line. But a nice gain for Whitfield. Another three, three yards, it looks like. Third down and four for the South Third down and four for the Cavaliers at the 11 yard line. So they can get a first down. We're down to three minutes and 15 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Six, six, Whitfield under center. Sean is gonna no pitch option. it to Walker. Corey turns it up, puts his head down. Oh, he's going to be close. He's Gets down to about the seven-yard line. And if you do the math, yeah, you're right, Mike. That's got to be right around the marker. He needed four yards, and it's a – well, the, be the lineman is in front of the – he's telling him, I think, to move. Yeah, I oh, think maybe the not. The ball is in front of the uh, yard marker. Yep, first down. Okay, they were slow to change it to first down. So the Cavaliers first in goal at the Morton 7. So we've seen a host of LP ball carriers here so far. Yeah, and a hot night tonight. That was probably yeah. a good idea for Coach Medina to uh, spread it out a little bit. First and goal at the 7 for the Cavaliers. Whitfield under center. Swain is the fullback. LP looks a little disjointed. Yeah, they oh, were. Whitfield's going to try it up Whitfield the middle. just keeps it, and he's going to be stopped. I saw a couple LP players kind of throw their hands up. Yeah, they I, that one did look kind of a broken play. Yeah. But, I mean, he got five yards on the play, so. So Whitfield made something out of nothing go, going five yards up the middle, kind of improvising. Second down and goal. Second and goal to mark it officially at the three of Morton. Six to six is the score. One minute and 30 seconds to go in this first quarter. Carrico is back in for the Cavaliers. LP deep in the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. Story and Walker are the wingbacks. Walker goes in motion. Oh. Carrico gets it, but flags fly. False start on LP. That hurts because that'll move him back to the eight-yard line now. Or second down and goal at the eight instead of at the three. So both teams with some penalties in this first quarter of the first game of the season. Yeah, that's the second uh, illegal procedure on the Cavs. I think someone's uh, two players are moving at the same time. Second and goal for LP at the Morton eight. Clock stops, 127 to go in the first quarter. Morton with the turf, a very nice uh, field here at Morton High School. We'll talk about uh, Morton at halftime, their unique nickname, and also the history with pumpkins here in Morton. <laughs> Whitfield under center for the Cavs. In motion is Walker. 
Sean's going to pitch it to Walker. Corey. Oh, a couple oh nice play. He's at the five, trying to get oh. it. Nope. But a nice run by Corey Walker. Boy, he made a couple kid, kids miss in the backfield. Yeah, it could have been a loss, but instead Walker gets it down to about the two before he was pushed out of bounds. Yeah, six-yard gain for Walker. Like you said, got it down to the two-yard line, but that easily could have been a loss behind the uh, in the backfield. Yeah, had two missed tackles if you're Morton. Walker proving to be elusive to bring down. They're going to say he got tackled inbounds. Clock is running. Third and goal at the two-yard line. We have under a minute to play in the first quarter. Quarterback keeper by Whitfield. Ooh, it's no be indication yet. Oh, touchdown. In. Touchdown, Sean Whitfield. That LP touchdown is brought to you by Tana Country Services. Doing whatever it takes 24-7. Plumbing, electric, heating, and cooling for over 100 years. Go to townandcountryservices.com to find out more. With 36 seconds to go in the first quarter, Sean Whitfield puts the Cavs back in the lead with a two-yard touchdown run. Let's see what the Cavaliers go for two here after the failed PAT after the first score. It's 12-6 LP. Again, 36 seconds to go in this first quarter. And the Cavaliers will indeed go for a two-point conversion. Trayvon Hunter goes in motion. Trayvon's going to get the pitch. Looking for blocks. He's in. Nice run by uh, uh, Trayvon Hunter, Hunter yeah. for sure. So Trayvon's first carry of the night proves to be a successful two-point conversion. That's brought to you by Financial Plus Credit Union. They belong to you, and that's the plus at Financial Plus Credit Union in Peru, Ottawa, Mendota, Morris, and Diamond. With 36 seconds to go in this first quarter, it is LP 14, Morton 6. So uh, plenty of scoring to start this season off between LP and Morris. And the Cavaliers get the lead right back. Thanks to a two-yard touchdown run. LP's touchdown runs have not been long tonight. <laughs> no. Both two-yard variety, Matt right. Carrico yep. and, and Sean Whitfield. Sean Whitfield. <laughs> but it all counts in the end. Should mention Morton. Uh, if you're not watching the video, uh, Morton looks a lot like Ohio State with uh, the reddish. I guess it's technically probably not red. It would be yeah, uh, it's... a variety of red. Yeah with uh, the, the Ohio State type helmets with the silver and uh, white pants. LP with uh, the road white t-shirts, the green helmets, green pants with red and uh, red trim. Look forward to seeing uh, if they have new home uniforms or not next week. I guess we'll find out all together. Shepard's kickoff is a pretty good one. Another good Moving kick by Shepard. Morton Reserner back to the 10, 15. And inside the 20, breaks a tackle. And yeah, bring him down. Yeah, he's going to be hogtied inside the 20. Number two, Ashton well, the Cavaliers' uh, kick return coverage has been one of their uh, problems over the years, so it's good to see these first couple uh, returns uh, kind of stop pretty well. So, Looks like Malik Madrigal made the tackle there for the Cavaliers, number 22. So that's nice coverage for the Cavs. Anytime yep. you can make the other team start inside their 20, that's a, that's a goal, and they'll start the drive at their own 19. First and 10 for Morton at their own 19. LP leading 14 to 6 with 26 seconds to go here in this first quarter. Oh, and quarter. I think, Jeremy, now we're in trouble because I've, uh, from some of our Ohio State fans, uh, we're oh. supposed to be referring it to the Ohio State University. So that's true. We'll have to watch that uh, if we comp comment on that again. <laughs> we do have a lot of fans in the Ohio area, too, so I know our Buckeye fans. Um, and they would definitely correct us with that, too. So we'll, we'll definitely be right the next time. Yes, this is our first game of the season. Yes, we're getting, we're getting warmed up. <laughs> yeah, another official, uh, there must be another player with an yeah, issue. Yeah, they're having some helmet issues. Or Yeah, that was the tight end that caught the pass. Yep. Drew but has to go out of the game, yep. at least for one play. He seems, he doesn't know why. I don't know, he looks okay. All right, first and 10, Morton at the 19-yard line, and whistles blow again. And flags fly. It's a false start on the Potters. So oh. let him move him back five yards. 
So some first game uh, issues on both sides of the ball, I would say, with the legal procedures and so forth. Trying to get the bugs out in this game one of the season. It'll be first and 15 Morton now back at their own, uh, or first and 15 at their own 14 yard line. Probably one more play in this first quarter. Yeah, you would think that this would be a run uh, and end the first quarter. First and 15 for Morton. And they hand it off to Glass. Oh, nice. Nice play by the defense tackle. there. Yeah, let's see. Number 20, Glass, the ball 54. Carrier. Holding on to him for the Cavaliers Will was Doherty. Will Doherty. Nice play. Yeah, it wasn't going to let go. And that should be it for the first quarter. It was a good one for the Cavaliers. They lead Morton by a score of 14 to 6. And when we come back, uh, the Potters will have the ball, but just outside their own end zone. You're listening to LP Cavalier Football on 1039 WLPO AM 1220. LaSalle, Peru, Oglesby. We've played one for Morton. The visiting LP Cavaliers leading the Potters by a score of 14 to 6. It feels great to be at the ball game, Phil. Nice to see things opening back up. Just in time to celebrate Hometown National Bank's 140-year anniversary. I agree, Dave. It gives us even more of a reason to have a party. By the way, where's Tammy? Because it's one, two, three tricks you're out at the old ball game. Does that answer your question? At Hometown National Bank, our hope is to see all of our great customers, friends, and communities getting back and doing the things that they love. Like singing! Hometown National Bank, celebrating 140 years. And Brad Piazzi. L.W. Schneider, a manufacturer of precision firearm parts in Princeton, looking for you. L.W. Schneider's hiring for all shifts, full and part-time, with additional hours available. No experience? No worries. L.W. Schneider will train you. Unemployment benefits are running out. Start your career today with approved and local leader. Be part of a creative, collaborative, diverse team with excellent benefits. Go to lwschneider.com slash careers or call Wendy at 815-875-3835. L.W. Schneider is an equal opportunity employee. Be in the know in Stark Rock Country with Rod and Tom. Mornings on 1039 WLPO. Star Rock News. Jeremy Aiken and Mike Porter back here at uh, Morton High School, and we have another false start penalty on the Potters. Man, they're their own worst enemy right now. Second down and 20 for Morton as the ball is spotted at their own eight yard line. So first play of the second quarter, two seconds came off the clock. Yeah, they were trying to do a quick screen and uh, got that false start, so. There's a quick pass, not much there yardage wise. It was caught by Jackson Weber. There to make the tackle for the Cavaliers was Byron Verdun. His knees went down. In the NFL, he would have been able to get up and run, but not in high school or college. Yep, so, so let's see uh, third and 15. Let's yeah. see the Cavs uh, not give up a first down here. Only rushing three on the line. Let's see if they uh, can put any pressure on the court. Another oh, penalty flag. It's going to be false start again. Again on Morton. So their offensive line having all kinds of issues. And it'll be third hmm. down and 20, and they'll be back inside their 10-yard line. That's two in the uh, first uh, 37 seconds here. Yeah. I'm sure the Morton head coach across the way, Tim Brilly, is... Uh, yeah, that's got to be the fourth right for the now. game so far. So let's see if they go for it. They're going to pass, straight drop back. Throws over oh. the intended receiver's head. That was Seth Glatz. Trayvon Hunter had the uh, coverage. Pressure put on for the Cavaliers. Looked like Luke Murtis got in the backfield along with Ethan Bell. Also there for the Cavaliers putting some pressure was Will Doherty. So the Cavaliers are going to have really good field position here because Morton is going to yeah. have to punt this ball from their own end zone. Jackson Weber... And uh, back for the Cavaliers, standing inside is a 45-yard line. It's hard to tell who that is. Is that Mason Lynch? Might be Mason Lynch. Yeah, number three, Mason Lynch. Snap is good, and the kick is up. Lynch is going to let it go. It takes a Morton bounce. Holy a cow, yes, it did. The oh. It's still rolling. 
And wow. And they will down it at the LP 37 yard line. So that turned out to be a really nice punt. Boy. For Weber. Still pretty good field position for the Cavaliers. Obviously, we're hoping to maybe start on the Morton side of the field. But the Cavaliers will start this drive at their own 37 yard line. 10.54 to go in the first half. LP 14, Morton 6. And the Cavaliers won the hometown National Bank coin toss. So uh, the Cavaliers will get the ball to start the second half. Let's see if they can do a nice long drive here. Yep, possibly tire out the defense a little bit. Yeah. Whitfield under center for the Cavs. He hasn't really aired it out at all yet. Went to the air. No, he hasn't really had to. Just nope. keeping Sean it to the ground it. and being very conservative, but no gain on that play. Oh. They ran the option, and Whitfield turned it up, but nothing there. He got back to the line of scrimmage, and that is all. Second down and 10 for LP. One turnover in this game, and it was a big one. Morton fumbled the opening kickoff. Luke Murtis with the recovery, and that led to a uh, touchdown for the Cavaliers. Always love points off turnovers. Yep whether it's football, basketball, you name it. Yeah, and he forced that fumble and picked it up. Yep. So nice play by uh, at the beginning of the game. Second and 10. LP's going to throw. Whitfield straight drop back. has got plenty of time. Oh, he's going deep. Going deep to Robleski. Oh. Just overthrew him. Tyler Robleski got some separation. Man, just overthrew Robleski a little bit. Just uh, off the fingertips there yep. for Robleski, 6'3", wide receiver. Senior. Yeah, Tyler's a nice big target is height wise. Not big as far as weight wise, but six foot three. And uh, Tyler got some separation. Just could not haul it in. Incomplete. First incomplete pass of the night for Sean Whitfield. It'll be third down and ten for the Cavaliers. Clock stops at 10.01 to go in the second quarter. See what Coach Medina draws up for this play, third and ten. Got uh, one split out wide right receiver is Ozzie Hernandez. Robleski is the other receiver. They go up the middle, mm. uh, Carrico, and he gets a solid gain, but going to be about three, four yards short of a first down. Seven yard gain LP's for Carrico, went for it on but. Fourth uh, down once, but that was fourth and one. And it looks like, Mike, they're going to punt this one as Whitfield goes off the field. So does Corey Walker and Tyler Robleski. So back to punt for the Cavaliers is Joey Shepard. Fourth and four from the 44. And I would not. Oh, I thought that was Glatz. At no, he's not back 23. there. <laughs> As I say, I wouldn't yeah, punt it to let's, him. Looks oh. like a timeout for LP. Maybe they didn't have the right personnel. This is their first punt attempt of the season. The right, you want to make sure it's right here before you don't want to make any mistakes. Yeah. Yeah, there was a late late player coming in. We'll take a short break here. We'll come right back for the punt. It's 14 to 6, LP leading Morton. Back in a few seconds on 1039 WLPO. Throw any of your favorite foot longs into a bowl with the same portion of meat, fresh veggies, cheese, and sauce, just without the bread. Try chicken bacon ranch, meatball marinara, or the steak and cheese. Add your favorite fresh veggies to the mix, and it all adds up into a packed protein bowl. Go pro with double the meat for only $3 more. Get it all at your local subway in Spring Valley, Peru, LaSalle, Oglesby, Ottawa, or Marseilles. An Illinois Valley tradition for sports continues on 1039 WLPO. Star Block News, Talk, and Classic Rock. Jeremy Aiken. Jeremy Aiken. Mike Porter back Mike here Porter. from Morton High School. 14 to 6 is the score. 9.19 to go, and here's the punt. Nice punt. Yeah, very nice. By Shepard going to take a neutral bounce, I guess. Yep. Now it's backing and up. And <laughs> yeah, uh, LP will down it at the Morton 27-yard line. Antonio Rodriguez on the sideline should have do a little uh, backpedaling well, there with the another ball. Another penalty is in a block, uh, block, a legal block on Morton, I think. Oh. A block below the the waist. Oh. That would be maybe a 15-yard walk-off. 
Yeah, if that's a uh, let's see what we got chop here. Chop block of some sorts. Or is LP? Is that the offense staying on the? F no, that's the. Yeah, we're waiting to see. Ooh, running into the kicker. Oh yeah, running into the kicker. So LP will get a first down. Yeah, that's a. They were fourth and four, so five yard penalty will uh, give LP that first down. So. Wow, another costly penalty on Morton. Roughing the kicker will keep the drive alive for the Cavaliers. We saw some personnel coming out and was waiting for Whitfield. And the LP offense back on the field. There's still some confusion. Wow. Wow. So that wasn't the 15-yard variety, no, but, but still it, five yards was enough to give them the first down. Yep, so LP's back in business at their uh, almost right at midfield. First and 10 LP at the 49. Let's see if the Cavaliers can make the Potters pay for that penalty. 9.09 to go in the first half. Walker in motion, and Whitfield's going to pitch to Walker. Corey turns it up, 45, 40, first down, uh -oh. a flag flies. It's probably coming back. A legal, a legal block, I would guess, yep. or a hold. Walker was a nice run right in front of the LP bench, but uh, it's coming back. So yep. a lot of flags here in this game. That on the gate, a long run by Corey Walker. Walker has shown some uh, explosiveness in this game. Yeah, not only that, he's very elusive too. He's uh, made the defense miss some tackles. So, but holding on the or legal uh, holding on LP. So, so basically, back to the line of scrimmage because <laughs> right. it's from the spot of right. foul. Yep. So it's first down and ten. So, could been could have been worse. Could have been worse. Eight forty-five to go in the first half. LP leading fourteen to six. Cavaliers with the football. In motion is Walker. Another oh. flag. Boy, the uh, referee false in the start. backfield has been extremely busy this evening. And it's a false start on LP. So you hope this is just first game stuff from both teams with the false start penalties. Hmm. That moves it back to the 44-yard line. First and 15 for the Cavs. At halftime, we'll have a subway scoreboard update. We'll have a second half adjustment. And uh, we'll talk about what's going on this weekend at LP High School as far as uh, events. And uh, we'll take a look at Morton, the high school, the nickname. and Learn we'll a little bit more about the host. Yeah. Whitfield with the Oh, option. he kept it. I He's thought he was going to pass it. Or Toss it. But yeah, Walker was the back. Yeah. But uh, Morton did a nice job of taking Walker out of the play. Yep. And uh, Sean turned it up and got a couple yards. Really wasn't much uh, open field there. He gets two. So it's second and 13. Now they'll say second and 12 at the 47 for the Cavaliers. Seven and a half minutes to go in the ball game, or in the first half. Been a lot of action here, almost like a full ball game's worth of action. Straight drop back by Whitfield. He's got time. He's going to tuck it down and run. Sean is still going oh, 45 he's up. 40. He's down to the Morton 35. It's a first down for the Cavaliers. No flags on the play this time. 21 yard run by Whitfield there. Yeah, he's got that ability. Sean. Yeah, well, and the offensive line did a good job. They, yeah. He gave him time, but the uh, defensive backs uh, were holding or did a very good job on the receivers, so Woodfield kept it. He made the decision quick to run with it. He, he broke one tackle, and once he got past that first would be tackler, it was a lot of open field for Whitfield. So, first and 10 Cavaliers at the Morton 33 yard line. Trayvon Hunter split wide left. In motion is Walker. Oh, Whitfield oh. runs into Carrico. Someone, yep. And Whitfield's going to take a loss of about two yards back to the 35-yard line. So another uh, uh, broken play for the Cavaliers. Luckily, he didn't put the ball on the turf. Yeah, he didn't have a shot there. Ran right into the uh, uh, line uh, running back there in the backfield. Second down and 12 for LP at the Morton 35-yard line. 
Malik Madrigal back in for the Cavs. Nope. Looks Whistles like to be a timeout. Blow, uh, timeout by LP once again. It's her second timeout of the first half. Morton has not taken a timeout. It's hot. So uh, not a bad idea to get some of these players some Gatorade and get a, a breath. Second down and 12 coming up after the timeout. We'll be home next Friday night. The Cavaliers home opener against Metamora. The Redbirds, uh, I would say one of your top programs in the state, usually year in, year out. So that'll be a lot of fun seeing Metamora come to Howard Fellows Stadium next uh, week. The Redbirds coming, not a bad drive for no. Metamora to LP. So no, but like you uh, said, a hist very historical program yes. there. And they're in the same conference as Morton is, uh, the yep. Middle Illini. So yep. I'm sure there's some Metamora coaches here tonight looking sure. at Morton and LP. Yep. So it'll be a lot of fun on the turf again next week. In fact, uh, LP will be on the turf, what, four straight nights because three home games in a row. And then week five will hit the road to Sycamore, which has natural grass yep. at their facility. So second and 12 for the Cavaliers. Hunter goes in motion, Whitfield pitches, Trayvon puts oh. it on the turf, picks oh. it up, and he's gonna be tackled for a loss. So Trayvon just couldn't get a handle on it. Loss of one yard, it'll be third and 13 for the Cavs. Luckily that ball bounced right back yeah. into his hands there. Yeah, he really didn't miss a beat. It, no. Uh, uh, Trayvon really didn't break his stride at all. The ball ball bounced right up to him. But and it's just third. couldn't get any momentum going. Uh, so. Third and 13 for the Cavaliers. Probably the best approach here is to try to get some of the yardage and maybe set up a manageable fourth down because you're in Morton territory. Carrico behind Whitfield. They give it to Carrico. Matt's got some running room down about the 30. He gets a decent amount of yardage. Gain about six at least. Now the market right at the 30 of Morton. Gain of six. Yeah, fourth and seven is it's manageable. Fourth and seven LP at the Morton 30 yard line. One timeout left for LP. Plenty of time to uh, try to get this one yep. in the end zone. Malik Madrigal is a, is a wide out. Let's see if they maybe get him involved. Whitfield's gonna pass. He's looking for Malik. Throwing towards the end zone. Instead to Hunter, over through Trayvon. Yep, that was out of bounds. So he, he wouldn't have been able to catch that one. So incomplete pass, Whitfield misses Trayvon Hunter. And it'll be a turnover on downs on the Cavaliers. So the Cavaliers were given a break with the uh, running into the kicker. Kept the drive alive, but they're not able to uh, punch it in. Well, not only that, it's kept the Morton offense off the field. Yeah, so for a long obviously time. Uh, number 20, Glatz has not had the ball for quite some time. 14 to six, 434 to go in the first half. More whistles blowing. Uh-oh. Before the even, uh, maybe another equipment issue, it looks like. Nope, they're pulling someone off. Caleb Burrell like. for LP, you're gonna have to check out. Not sure why. Something's wrong with his uniform. It's like uh, Ozzy comes in off the bench, Ozzy Hernandez. The officials are in uh, mid-season form here. There's a run by Glatz. He's running out of room, puts his head down, and Ethan Bell will make the tackle. Man, uh, Glatz is a heck of a runner. It looked yeah, like LP is. may have gotten him for a loss, but he was able to turn on the Jets and uh, turn the corner and get a solid four yards, almost five on that carry. Clock stops at 418. Uh, Morton going back to the no huddle. We saw this yep. on their opening possession. They've won away from it. And there's a handoff to Glatz up the middle. And he's running hard, going to be stopped short of a first down. Not too much there, a couple yards. Swain was in the area. So was uh, Nicholas Belsky. 
for the Cavaliers. And here we go, no break for the Cavalier defense. Third and two. Kaufman, oh. the quarterback, hands it off to Glatz. Breaks a couple tackles and he's got a first down. In on that tackle for the Cavaliers was Gage Starkey and Will Doherty. That's a Potter first down at their own 43 yard line. They move the chains and they're quickly up to the line of scrimmage. Three and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Kaufman gonna throw. Has a man out in the foot, oh. he dropped it. I think he tried running before he yep. caught the pass. Tyson Hart. He was open. Was wide open out in the flat and it hits the fingertips and goes to the turf. So a break for the Cavaliers. It'll be second down and 10 now. The clock does stop at 334. Morton will have uh, trips to the right, three receivers. Now they bring one up, oh, three to the right yep. still of the quarterback Kaufman. Oh. Whistles blow and let's see if it's another false start. It is. Wow. Moving back five more yards. And you can oh. start to see the frustration from nope, some of the Morton. To, uh, shrugging their shoulders on offense now. Yep, there it is. Body language not good when you have this many false starts. They, they, you know, they have a couple positive plays. We've seen that with LP in past yep. years. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Where you'd have a positive play or two, and then penalties do you in. Yep. Yep, they're going in the wrong direction. Second and 15. The clock is running uh, under 3.30 now. Kaufman, the, the quarterback, going to hand it off to Glatz, and he runs Ooh. full speed ahead into the Cavalier defender. He ran into so Chris Swain, was it? Yeah, Chris Swain, yeah. he's a tough guy at linebacker. Swain adjusting his helmet after that hit. <laughs> but he took him down for only a four-yard gain. So it's third and long, third and 11 for Morton. We're under three minutes to go in the first half. Nope. They're going to pass out of the backfield to Glatz. Swain runs him down, Ooh, and he's nice helped play. out by a few teammates. Yeah. Yep, they had some blockers out there, but the defense uh, did a great job. Rodriguez was out there, so was Hernandez, but Chris Swain, uh, with the pursuit, slowed Glatz down. Only a five-yard gain, so it looks like they're probably going to go for it here. They're probably going to take a timeout because they're taking a long time to think about it. They still got plenty of time with the play clock. 21 seconds on the game clock. Yep, yeah, looks like they're going to go for it. Fourth and six. 2.15 to go in the second quarter. Kaufman a quarterback, and now Morton's going to use that timeout. I had a feeling. Yeah, there's no reason not to. Nope, they have a full set of timeouts. Only two minutes left in the uh, first half, so can't use them at after halftime. Nope. 2.11 to be exact, 14-6. to six. Morton trailing LP. The Cavaliers can stop them on a fourth down. We'll see if they just go conservative and be happy with the 14-6 lead or try to do something before the end of the half. Remember, the Cavaliers won the Hometown National Bank coin toss, so they will get the ball to start the second half. Yeah, my guess is that they'd be relatively conservative, yeah. like you said, since they have the ball coming back. Don't want to make any mistakes and give Morton any sort of momentum. We'll see what Coach Medina and B Coach Boudreau have uh, in store. First oh, LP's the defense. Punt, punt team's out oh, now. They changed their mind. If you're LP, be careful here. Stay at home. Don't let them uh, pull a fake one on you. Yeah, I can't tell if Glatz is out there. I'm thinking not. And they are going to punt it. And... Back is Lynch, and Lynch is going to take it inside of his 20. And nice little return yeah, nice out return. past the 25, maybe the 27-yard line. Lynch, great, uh, not a bad job there. So Mason Lynch protecting the football. And uh, got to believe we'll probably see a couple of Carrico runs here. And the Cavaliers will go to the locker room with a lead, hopefully. 14-6 to six is the score. The story of the first half for Morton, it would be, I would say, their own errors between all the uh, 
the false start yeah. penalties, and then obviously the fumble that led to a touchdown to a start the game. So don't think LP's going to do anything fancy here. First and 10 at their own 27-yard line, two minutes to go. Whitfield going to keep it. Sean's at the 35, 40. Spins ahead out to the 44-yard line. So that's a gain of about 17 for Whitfield. So maybe that changes things with a big gain on first down for the Cavaliers. They'll give him 18 out to the 45-yard line. I think yeah, if you're LP, you get aggressive now. Two long runs so far in the second quarter. Yep. So, yeah, they give him a little space here, two minutes left. Maybe they will go to the air now. And they're still taking their time out of the huddle. 145 to go, 14 to 6 LP here in the second quarter. Cavaliers with one timeout left. Whitfield going to run the option again. Sean's got the corner. Just no and hold. There's, there's a, a hold. Yep, yep. There's the penalty. Sean's down the sideline, but a yep. uh, flag flies right in front of the LP coaching staff. One would think yep, it is a hold as he was trying to turn the corner. Coach Medina pacing the sideline. No indication yet, but be shocked if it wasn't a hold. It is holding on yep. LP. So that one hurts. Would have been a big gain inside the Morton 40. From the spot of the foul, which was inside uh, Morton's 50-yard line. Yeah, so it looks like they're going to lose about four to five yards. Yeah, um, and lose some time off the clock, too. Same play on that last holding. Yeah. Though, the same exact uh, play to out to the left far side of yeah, the field. different side of the field. And the clock is running. Minute 15 here in the first half. 14 to 6 LP. Whitfield under center. Now they'll go Carrico. Matt gets the penalty yardage back. And a little bit more, almost near midfield. Yeah, they'll mark it just shy. No, LP's, LP's hurrying it a little bit. Seven yards. Second and six. No huddle for the Cavaliers. And Carrico again, and not much there. Now they might just see him let it go. Nope. Someone's going timeout. Maybe. Oh, yep. LP did. LP okay. uses their last timeout of the half. Okay. The ball is right inside midfield on the Morton side of the halfway line. The market at the Potter 49-yard line. It'll be third down and about four for the Cavaliers once they break this timeout. Again, we'll have the uh, halftime show coming up brought to you by St. Margaret's Health. We'll have a second-half adjustment, a Subway scoreboard update, and uh, we'll also uh, talk about the schedule this weekend for the LP High School, the Cavaliers. And a lot of uh, games going on right oh now, yeah. Friday Night Lights. That's uh, yep. great to see. So Some Saturday games updates. in our area. Yep. Weren't originally scheduled to be Saturday, but it's still going to be another touch-and-go season, I have a feeling, between COVID and uh, busing and officiating. Yep. It's just kind of messy. Yeah, we've already seen uh, 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 shortages on referees, yep. so hopefully that doesn't affect the games going forward. So back after the timeout, LP third down and four at the Morton 49-yard line. LP got a false start, yep. Oh. So that may change uh, the play call. Went from third and four to third and nine. This uh, is getting up there as far as most false starts in a half <laughs> when you combine both teams. Yeah, I see six penalties on LP so far uh, in the first half. And most, uh, they've had a couple holds. Yep. Big holding calls because uh, they negated nice gains. Clock has stopped with 34 seconds to go. Madrigal and Robleski at receiver. Oop, delay a game. Wow. Oh, no, they caught a false start, but... <laughs> The uh, clock, the play clock was okay, at so zero before Woodfield. So take your pick, I guess. Ball, so 
I think the um, the ref just wanted to do the uh, false start <laughs> motion there. <laughs> he's just used to it. Yeah, but that was maybe a, uh, it's so hot he's just trying to move his arms to get a little wind, know, a breeze down there. We'll put delay a game on the list here. My partner noticed that, saw the the game clock. So yeah, it's, it's uh, both corners. Yep. Uh, quarterbacks definitely can see that. Third and long for the Cavs. Whitfield's going to pass. Looking, looking, still looking, throwing deep. Uh -oh, throws throw it, it up, up for grabs, and it's picked off. Yeah, just threw it up for grabs, kind of ill-advised. Yeah, that probably wasn't very smart to do that. Interception for Morton. That was made by Connor Hines. First turnover for the Cavaliers. The good thing is there's only 23 seconds left. Right. I guess you could say that was as good as a punt. Yeah, in you one know, way, that's, right? That's in one way you can look at it. The, uh, they're already down to the 26-yard line, so Cavalier defense can continue doing what they're doing. Morton does have two timeouts. Whether it's running the ball or uh, passing, you got to think they're going to try to get in the hands of their stud running back. So let's see what Morton has here with 23.7 seconds left. 14 to six LP in the first half. No scoring in the second quarter. Kaufman the quarterback, and they're gonna run a reverse. Oh, they're gonna do a reverse here. There's a lot of blocking with over Kaufman here. Kaufman as the lead blocker, and that took a lot of time off the clock. Ethan Bell with the tackle. Uh, the run from Ashton Sidem. That the positive, Mike. That took almost 10 seconds off the clock. Yeah, eight yards for uh, <laughs> 10 seconds. So yeah, he ran a long way. Did they give him the first down? Uh, looks like oh, it. The they one. Him, yeah, they popped it up a little bit. So so 10 yards in the carry. But again, four, we're down to 14.4 seconds now. Kaufman rolling right. Looking, throwing towards the sideline. He has a man inside the 40, 45. Swain oh, oh. pushes him out, and that'll be, oh, there's some extracurricular. And he took his helmet oh, off. No, no, no. You can't have that. You just can't have that. He's going to get two personal foul penalties. That was Byron Verdun, who's a uh, returning Cavalier. Unless the, you got to hope almost there's a negating penalty on Morton somewhere, but oh yeah, yep, yep. okay, so that was the reason yep. why. I mean that you, Morton no. did something that really made Verdun unhappy. Oh, there's two unsportsmanlike conduct wow. penalties okay. on Morton and yeah. a personal foul. So the reason, of, yeah, and the reason we reacted with Byron is because normally when you take your helmet off, it's an automatic penalty. Right, correct. Which he took his helmet off, and I guess we know why. He was very upset. I didn't see what happened. It was back in the backfield. Oh, personal foul now on LP. Okay. Are they going to? Sportsman like. Offsetting. So let's see. Uh, let's sort this out. We're down to 7.9 seconds. So that's. Hopefully that's not two 15 yard mm -hmm. penalties. But they're yeah, moving it. It looks all like the way. more. Yeah, LP's going to get the worst of it. Oh, the. Unless he, uh, no, they they didn't call anything on Morton. Yeah, so he was pointing the wrong way, I guess. Wow, that hurts all the way down to the LP 23-yard line. I mean, that flipped the whole field. Wait, it, how many That's yards? That's a 41-yard penalty. How do you get 41 yards out of that? I think Jose is going to be looking into this. Yeah, how do you get that many yards out of it? I mean, at maximum, it should be 30. I mean, spot foul, that was, right. they were behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, so it inside be. the Morton, it was inside the 35, about the 30-yard line. I don't understand that. Jose walked away. I don't know if he's going to lose this argument or not. I don't see the chains moving. And we wonder if uh, Verdun is ejected or not. I, I, guess, I would think you do. Two personal fouls, you're probably out. Well, that's so they're going to mark it. So let's see if the LP defense can uh, come up with a big play. Only 7.9 seconds, like you said. So 
Hopefully the, oh, and he got LP to jump. So LP's kind of discombobulated right now. That's uh, the Morton fans are fired up. Their team's fired up. LP's got to keep their composure. So first and five at the 18. Now we got to look and make sure the home clock guy isn't slow <laughs> on the draw here. 7.9 seconds to go. Morton's got some timeouts to use. Kaufman gets the ball. Oh, clock's running. Throwing towards the end zone. Intercepted! Doesn't matter at all. That's Whitfield out of the end zone. Sean's at the 30, 35, 40. Don't get hurt. <laughs> and yeah. he goes down. And some late pushing and shoving. Nice job by Ethan to stay away from yep. it. And there's still going to be Martins barking, and they're going to get a penalty with no time left. This game got really chippy in a hurry. Bottom it line is Sean Whitfield with an interception to keep Morton out of the end zone. So I guess you would mark that probably at the resumption of the second half, that 15 yards. Yeah, I don't know if they would do that on the kickoff perhaps. I would, yeah, or the kickoff. So big interception by Sean Whitfield. Oh, actually, I think there may have been more than one. So oh, maybe boy. the Cavs should get 30 yards. Or 41, 41, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so that's the end of the half there. Wow, a wild end to the half. Bottom line is your Cavaliers lead 14-6, to six, and they're going to get the ball to start the second half as Coach Jose Medina going to have another chat with this officiating crew. So uh, a wild end of the half there. Probably finding out uh, they should get, yeah, where they're make gonna sure end. they remember that uh, that Markoff should come at the start of the second half. 15-yard uh, penalty at sportsmanlike conduct, I got to believe, on the Morton Potters. So that's delaying as uh, looks like Coach Carney out there as well yep. with uh, with Jose trying to get an explanation as the Morton band <laughs> is ready to take the field. A wild first half. A lot of action, a lot of penalties, <laughs> three turnovers between the two teams, some extracurricular activity. Bottom line, the Cavaliers lead. 14 to 6. We're going to take a break. Come back. We'll uh, have some first half numbers. LP 14, Morton 6. You're listening to Cavalier Football on 1039 WLPO. And the leading cause of adult disability in the United States. To recognize a stroke, think fast. Face. Does one side of the face droop? Arm. Is one leg or arm weak or numb? Speech. Is speech slurred or strange? Time. If you observe any of these symptoms, it's time to call 911 immediately and come to the all-new emergency department at St. Margaret's Hospital. Looking for a great way to introduce your children to the concepts of savings and money management? Look no further than Eureka Savings Bank with our Money Miners Kids Club. Hi, I'm Mike Porter. It's never too early to begin a financial education with your children. Let us assist you by making it fun and easy to save while building confidence and security in your children as they are provided opportunities to learn about all banking services. Start them off on the right track financially with the Money Miners Kids Club at Eureka Savings Bank, member FDIC. Talking on the telephone is one thing. Talking about telephones is another altogether. Hi, I'm Jeff Steele from FreeSec Electric. Are you frustrated and confused by all the new telephone technology for your business? Cloud or premise-based, digital or IP? Just want a phone system that works, that's dependable with features you really want? Well, good news. That's FreeSec Electric's specialty. You dream it, and we'll build it. It's that easy. FreeSec Electric and Communication Systems, the Illinois Valley's business communications leader for over 40 years. Call or visit us today at FreeSecElectric.com. Hi, this is John with Elite Seam and Scudders out of Spring Valley. If you're looking at getting all the mold and all the stuff off your house that's been on your home for many years, call Elite Seam and Scudders. We can power wash your house right the first time. We have hot seam machines with hot, hot water, and we can take care of all your pressure washing needs. Call 663-8364 and get your driveway clean, your house pressure washed, your deck, whatever you would need to get your house cleaned up. Call Elite Seamless Gutters out of Spring Valley. We will get your power washing needs taken care of today. That's 663-8364 and get your power washing done right the first time. Get all this mold that's stuck on that siding, on that vinyl siding, cleaned off for the first time. You've got somebody that can do the job right the first time. Call Elite Seamless Gutters at 663-8364 and get that junk 
off your house today. That's Elite Seamless Gutters in Spring Valley. 815-663-8364. L.W. Schneider, a manufacturer of precision firearm parts in Princeton, looking for you. L.W. Schneider's hiring for all shifts, full and part-time, with additional hours available. No experience? No worries. L.W. Schneider will train you. Unemployment benefits are running out. Start your career today with a proven local leader. Be part of a creative, collaborative, diverse team with excellent benefits. Go to lwschneider.com slash careers or call Wendy at 815-875-3835. L.W. Schneider is an equal opportunity employer. No matter who we are or where we come from, we all experience difficulties in life. Military veterans know that sometimes it takes strength and determination to make it through. Whether it's physical challenges or struggles on the inside, it takes strength to ask for help when you need it. Learn how veterans like us have reached out for help and hear stories of strength and recovery at maketheconnection.net. Listen on FM 1039, AM 1220. Get the free WLPO app. Or ask your smart speaker to play 1039 WLPO. Star Block News, Talk, and Classic Rock. Jeremy Aiken and Mike Jeremy Aiken and Mike Porter back, back here at the uh, Morton High School Marching Band. Marching band. Out on the field, out on the field, and it's nice to hear a marching band once again. And now the football is back. And, is uh, back. and welcome uh, to our St. Margaret's Health halftime show. Halftime show. Stay on top of your game Stay with help from St. Margaret's Health and Dr. Shea. Shea. He's the Illinois Valley's He's only Illinois doctor Valley's certified only doctor both for the and sports medicine. And it is 14 to 6 LP. Scoring summary from the first half. The Cavaliers, Cavaliers jumped ahead at 10 26 in the first quarter. Matt Carrico, a two yard touchdown run. The kick was no good. Then, with 8 34 to go in the first quarter, it was a seven yard touchdown pass to Strube. And the kick was and no kick good. Was and then with 36 with seconds, 30 to go, seconds to go, uh, in the first quarter, Sean Whitfield with a two-yard touchdown, two touchdown run. And Hunter and had a two-point two conversion, two conversion run to give LP a 14-6 lead. There was no scoring was no in the scoring second quarter. The second quarter. Three, Three turnovers in the first in half. The first half. Two, caused by, two caused by LP's defense. Uh, the first uh, was the Luke Curtis, a fumble force, a fumble recovery on the opening kickoff of the game. And then Sean Whitfield, the last play of the half with an interception from the end zone. LP with one turnover, Sean Whitfield. Threw a pick, and, it was picked off and it was picked off by Hines. Hines. So there you go. So there you go. LP and Morton, LP 14, and Morton to 6 14 to 6 at the half. At the half. A, lot of penalties, a lot of penalties. But uh, hopefully but, we can just uh, attribute that, that like to first game jitters. Uh, some numbers uh, wise, some I know LP's uh, put the ball to uh, quite a bit. Quite a few players this game. Yeah, they've done so far they've spread it out a little bit on the offensive side of the ball. Kirko obviously is the leading rusher for the game, 82 yards. Field, uh, Sean Woodfield with 64. Also with 64. Uh, it's a good running, uh, by, the good running by the quarterback and there. Walker and we have Walker doing a little bit 10 yards. Uh, Woodfield was uh, over two passing. No complete yet. Uh, he did have the interception. Uh, he did have the interception. Like but, said, I but, so but I think the story so far in the first half are the penalties. LP alone had LP alone eight. Had eight. Uh, so that's just uh, uh, so that's uh, really tough uh, to overcome. Obviously, LP is leading 14 to 6 right now. So hopefully they can collect that. Coach Medina can get something right with the offense, something right with the and, offense. Uh, you know, just have a uh, you know, have or something. Or like something. you said, it's the first like game. The first it's game. hot. It's uh, hot. You know, they're just uh, getting used to getting used themselves to playing with each other against the real opponents. So, so hopefully, uh, hopefully they can do something, uh, just something in the second half, half and, and, half uh, and uh, hit the penalty down. Well, speaking of the second half adjustment, we're going to come up with that here. We're going to take a break as the dance team now entertains the crowd. We're at halftime. 14 to 6 LP. Leading LP Morton and the Cavaliers will get the ball to start we'll the, the second, half. Start the second Stay half. Stay tuned. We'll have the Stay second tuned. half we'll adjustment have next. Adjustment we'll next. also have a scoreboard we'll update, and Mike will run down what's going on at LP on this weekend. LP Jeremy this Aiken, Mike Porter, Aiken, Mike Porter from Morton High School. The Cavaliers lead the Potters 14 to 6. More of our St. Margaret's Hall halftime show in moments. When you open up your credit card bill, is it more like a romance or a scary movie? 
Change up the way you see your bill each month with Visa cards from Illinois Valley Credit Union. Get the Visa Classic card or the Visa Platinum card. Everything okay? Otherwise? And uh, the convenience of Visa is the hometown nope, service of John Illinois Wentz. Valley Credit Union. Get started today at IVCU.com. Illinois Valley Credit Union with locations in Peru and Princeton. Member ACUA. In 2004, Dave Vanagay was looking for a way to honor the former high school in his hometown of Mineral, Illinois. He had stories from family members as well as facts and figures from various sources. And while going through yearbooks, he noticed a pattern. Not only had Mineral closed its doors, but some of the schools they played against in basketball, football, baseball, and track also closed their doors as well. That's when Nanningay created the website Illinois High School Glory Days. Over 1,160 schools are featured on the website, which debuted in January 2005. You'll find facts about the towns where these schools were located, the history of education in these communities as well as school songs, win loss records, and names of famous alums from these schools. From Kaskaski to Chicago, Galena, the Cave and Rock, and everywhere in between. Come check out IllinoisHSGloryDays.com. Remember, IllinoisHSGloryDays.com and Classic Hits 103.9 WLPO. Still hearing the school bells, even though the schools are gone. Jeff Perry Auto Group is proud to sponsor the LP Keys to the Game. In life, as in sports, the keys are hard work, teamwork, and treating others the way you want to be treated. Hi, this is Steve Hammers, General Manager of Jeff Perry View at GMC. Our Jeff Perry team works hard every day to give you a great customer experience. If you're looking for a newer used vehicle or your vehicle needs service, I invite you to see why Jeff Perry customers come back again and again. Jeff Perry Auto Group, serving you in Peru and our new location in Rochelle. The biggest games and the best matchups are on 103.9 WLPO. Star Block News Talk and Classic Rock. Jeremy Aiken and Mike Jeremy Quarterback Aiken here Mike at uh, Morton High School, 14-6. Uh, to six. LP with the lead with over the, the Morton Potters. Potters. We're, We're listening to the St. Margaret's Health Halftime Show. And, uh, and uh, time now for our Subway for Scoreboard Subway Update, Subway brought to you by Subway in Peru, Peru, Spring Valley, LaSalle, Marcellus, and Oglesby. Enjoy a sandwich made with freshly baked bread and fresh ingredients right in front of your eyes. Subway. Subway, and fresh. And some of the fresh. scores and we got, St. B to hammering Sherrard in the third quarter, 38-0. Ottawa up 28-7 over Sandwich at half. Princeton threatening, Princeton to, run Princeton the threatening to run the clock on Rock Ridge. Two state-ranked teams state right there. Teams right the there. Tigers leading early in the third, 34 nothing over Rock Ridge. Middle of the third, Oregon on top of the hall, 13-7. Last check, Mendota beating Erie Pockets down 14-7. Early second, Stringer 6-6 with East Peoria, Peoria and Amboy Lemoyne running the clock on Peoria Heights by a score of 46 uh, to nothing. So to nothing. that is your so Subway scoreboard your update. update. Time now to uh, pass, now, uh, pass it off to my partner, uh, Mike Porter, uh, and uh, we'd like to bring you up to date on what's going on uh, athletics-wise, uh, activities-wise at LP High School as we are underway with a new school year, a new football season. Mike, what else we got going on LP wise Obviously, yeah, LP, uh, uh, fall sports are in full swing. Obviously, the uh, freshman the, uh, girls freshman volleyball girls team is going to be at the Serena at tournament, at tournament by the green team uh, the green at Serena team High School tomorrow. tomorrow. The, varsity the varsity girls tennis is, tennis is at the Sycamore at the doubles, doubles tournament at Sycamore High School, high school of course. Uh, uh, the varsity girls uh, uh, volleyball are going to be at the Upper Cedar Classic in Springfield Lutheran. That's always a big tournament for girls volleyball, and LP has done very, very well over the years at that tournament. Uh, the boys' uh, soccer the boys team soccer is going to be at the Earlville at the War on 34. Uh, game time to uh, be determined, time to be so determined. we don't know when they're playing on that one. And the girls' varsity golf team is going to be at the Princeton Ryder Cup at Wyattson Hills Golf Course in Princeton. So uh, a lot of activities going on with the sports at uh, LP. So, like I said, it's great to uh, see the boys and girls getting to do what they've been wanting to do for a long time. Yeah, fall sports in full effect. Uh, football, one of the last fall sports, if not the last, I think maybe, to uh, get going with their season here on August 27th. Again, we'll be uh, back at Howard Fellows Stadium next week against Metamora. In fact, we'll take uh, our spot in the press box for the next three weeks. It'll be nice, a three-game homestand to uh, start the year for the Cavaliers being at home against the Metamora Redbirds. Now, we talked about... Our venue tonight, uh, LP playing at Morton a second time in the last four years. Uh, very nice venue here. Uh, not a bad drive at all. Nope. And, uh, Mike, 
Morton is known for a few things. Uh, well, one thing in particular now is the pumpkins. Now, we didn't drive through town like we did last time. I remember we were coming through town last time and seeing some signage and I think right. a sign that said pumpkin capital of the world. Uh, can you get some insight on uh, the history behind Morton and its a long storied history right. of pumpkins. Yeah, it's hard to believe, but uh, small little Morton, Illinois is uh, apparently the ideal place for autumn tourism. Morton is known as the pumpkin capital of the world because 85% of the world's canned pumpkin is packed in the Nestle's Libby's plant located in the center of town. So 85% of all those canned pumpkins in the country in the world canned here in Morton, Illinois. So uh, it's must be the growing, uh, I don't know, <laughs> must something about the soil down here in Morton, but pumpkin capital of the world. So very cool uh, here in Morton. Of course, it's uh, not southeast of Peoria, uh, not too far. Or it's right off I-74. Right, so probably a suburb of Peoria. Yeah. People that work in Peoria live in Morton. Morton Buildings, I'm assuming that's got to have something to do with here in Morton, Illinois. Yeah, one would think. What about Morton Salt? Well, Morton Salt, I think that's located from Chicago. Oh, so, okay, all right. Yeah, all right. When it rains, it pours. So. <laughs> so there you go. There's a little history. And what about the nickname? You're probably wondering the Potters. No, it's nothing to do with Harry Potter. Uh, the school nickname, apparently, I, I had no idea. Uh, the Potters symbolizes the fact that the city of Morton housed the largest kiln pottery industry west of New York City until the 1960s. So Morton goes back not only with pumpkins, but a long history in Morton with uh, kiln pottery. So there you go. That is why the Morton potters are the potters. So um, back in the back in the old days, a lot of those kiln uh, flower pots were probably yeah. made here in Morton. So there you go. You learned something about uh, Morton. And we looked. We didn't really find any uh, no, uh, notable alums. No, we didn't see any celebrity uh, sightings here, but um, when we did drive in, we drove through a what few. was that small town? Uh, uh, Eureka with Ben Zobrist. Eureka. And uh, Ronald Reagan, Ben of Zobrist. Of course, Ronald Reagan went to school at uh, yep. Eureka College, but uh, it's very exciting to see our uh, one of our famous uh, Cub heroes is from <laughs> Eureka, Illinois. Yeah, he had uh, a sign uh, as we were heading out of Eureka, and we kind of talked about he maybe needs a bigger sign, you know, uh, at this point. Uh, there's not too many World Series MVPs. In fact, there's only so many in baseball, the 100-whatever right. years of the World. Right. I don't think the World Series is even 100 years old. But uh, to have Ben Zobrist, and I think he comes back every now and then to Eureka. And uh, so, yeah, so we did pass through Eureka. Well, I saw the college off in the distance, so uh, nice drive. But uh, glad you're joining us. If you didn't make the drive, joining us, whether it's on the radio or on our uh, video webcast, uh, again, just go to YouTube and search for Starved Rock Media. It's easy as that, and you can watch HD quality video of this LP Cavalier Morton Potter football game. So it's uh, really cool. Zach Shaw and Aaron Pelican uh, behind the camera doing uh, that action tonight. So check it out, and uh, you'll be able to go back and watch it. It'll be archived up there as well. So if you want to watch tonight's game once again, you have that ability. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll go back to music after our game because the assumption would be the Cardinals uh, will be over by the time we get done here. Jay Happ actually was pitching oh. for the Redbirds tonight, and it uh, looks like the Cubs and White Sox are in a wild one. Seven, yes, to six seven to six in the third in the, inning. Only the third inning. I believe that game started at seven. Yeah, so, that, that uh, game's going to go a long time. Here it time. is, nine o'clock, and that's uh, three and a half Oof. innings in. So we have uh, some uh, friends that are at the game, and okay. uh, I suspect they're going to be there a while. <laughs> uh, Cardinals are up four to three after eight innings. So uh, the Redbirds trying to hang on with a win over the Pirates. So uh, that's your Major League Baseball update. Uh, the Brewers are trailing two nothing to the Minnesota Twins. I know there's some Brewer fans sure. uh, in the Valley. So, uh, and a uh, really good time to be a Milwaukee sports fan. I mean, you had the Bucks win the NBA title. Brewers are in first place. And you, you think the Packers, assuming Aaron Rodgers doesn't uh, refuse to play. That's true. Uh, should be okay. At least okay with Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. Probably better than okay. So we'll see. But uh, 
Good time to be an LP Cavalier fan here tonight. They lead Morton 14 to six. And uh, Mike, we haven't really talked about it, so let's just do it off the cuff here. Yeah. Time for our Abacus Tax Service second half adjustment. The second half adjustment is brought to you by Abacus Tax and Accounting Services. Keep your business winning with Abacus Tax and Accounting Services. Find out more at abacustaxsv.com. My initial thought is, and it's probably the same thing for Morton, is trying to limit the penalties and mistakes. Uh, right. I think these two teams are pretty even. Maybe LP might even be more talented than Morton, but uh, both teams have had their share of mistakes kind of muddying up the game. Right, yeah, it's just slowing things down. Obviously, the offense can't get any momentum when after every couple plays is a five-yard penalty for a uh, false start, so illegal procedure, or a 10-yard holding penalty. So I think if they cut down the penalties, and make a little flow for the offense a little better. So that is our second half adjustment. Want to thank Abacus Tax Service and Accounting uh, Services bringing you our second half adjustment. We are ready for uh, the op- or the uh, second half kickoff, and that'll wrap up St. Margaret's Health halftime show. Remember to stay on top of your game with help from St. Margaret's Health and Dr. Shin. He's the Illinois Valley's only doctor certified in both orthopedics and sports medicine. So the Cavaliers, here we go, Mike. They did mark off the penalty. Morton will have to kick it off from their own 25-yard line. So the Cavaliers should get really good field position here to start the second half. A 15-yard walk-off because of the personal foul as time expired in the first half. So let's see if uh, both teams kind of settle down and – let the tempers cool off a little bit. Here's a short kick, and Trayvon let it go at the 30, picks it up, and he's going to be hit immediately, brought down at the 30-yard line. <laughs> so Hunter gets maybe a yard on the return after not being able to bring it in right away. Yeah, again, with that bobble, he just didn't get a chance to have any momentum. So, so LP will take over at the 30-yard line, their own 30. First and 10 as we start the second half. Nine o'clock, you're listening to uh, LP Cavalier Football, 103.9 FM, AM 1220, WLPO, LaSalle, Peru, Oglesby, as we hit the nine o'clock hour on opening night. Cavaliers with the lead 14 to six in the first crack at the football on offense here to start second half. Whitfield oh, nice breaks the tackle, Whitfield. and Sean's out past the 35-yard line. We'll mark it at about the 37. Yeah, Mike mentioned a nice run by Sean Whitfield. Not much running room, but he uh, made something happen. No, a small little hole there, and he was able to crack through there. So, Give him eight. Second down and two for the Cavaliers. And you feel really good if you can get this to a two-possession game. Yep. Now, Morton has shown uh, they can speed it up on offense. But uh, the Cavaliers look to have a pretty good defense once again. Here's Whitfield handing it off to Carrico. He moves the pile for a first down. Yeah, that's going to be a nice five, six yard by uh, Carrico. Move the chains. Carrico with uh, a big run in the first half over 40 yards. And he's just tacking on yardage. Uh, He's going to be, I'm sure, knocking on the door, if not getting past the 100-yard mark tonight. He's well on his way for sure. Yep. I think it'll be a good ending if we can get Carrico over 100 yards. Yep. LP's probably going to win most games. First down and 10 Cavs at their own 43-yard line. 10.30 to go in the third quarter. Whitfield going to keep it. Sean turns it up and gets a block, and he's out near midfield. Hmm. Just shy of midfield. Gain of six, maybe seven on the play. Gain of seven on the play. Gain of seven, so All right. second and short. LP's had very nice first down yardage, and that is so important, especially with an offense like LP right. where it's run heavy. Yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not uh, explosive, you know, throwing the ball down the field, run and shoot type stuff, but. Second down and three. Two minutes into the second half. 
Whitfield under center. Walker goes in motion. I think Morton. Oh, that might have been offsides. Yeah, yep. Morton jumped this time, and that will be a Cavalier first down. The Potters' defense is moving backwards. So that'll be a uh, free first down for the Cavs, a five-yard walk-off. First and 10 LP at the 45 of Morton. Morton did the same thing right at the end of the second quarter, so LP returns the favor. Quickly, the Cavaliers are in the Morton side of the field. And we're rolling right along here, uh, more than two and a half minutes into this third quarter. Here's Whitfield. He keeps it again. Sean is nice inside run. the 40, down about the 36. Number 10, Sean Whitfield again. So Whitfield is stepping up in a big way to start this second half. Nine yards on that carry. Again. Big yardage on first down. Yeah, this is exactly how Jose probably wanted to start this second uh, second half. This is a, uh, a send a message kind of drive here if they can punch this in. Would Maybe take with, half the quarter uh, off or so. 20-plus yards already in, the, uh, in this drive alone. Back under center. Walker goes in motion. There's Carrico. Oh, he's up the middle. One man to beat. He's at the 15 to 10. Brought down outside the five. Carrico. No flags, Mike, on the play. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> nope, down to the six-yard line, 30 yards. That puts Carrico well over 100 yards on the night. They mark it, now they mark it officially, it looks like about the seven, I would seven say. Seven-yard line, seven, first and goal. First and goal, and just like that, the Cavaliers back in the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. Carrico surpasses the 100-yard mark tonight. First and goal, Cavaliers. Statement drive. There's Carrico going up, and he He's is stopped just, just short. short. Six yards on the carry. Wow, what a statement drive here for the Cavaliers. Just quieting this Morton side of the stadium. Yep. I mean, they had a fun halftime show coming out of the break, and LP, a four-minute drive so far and still counting. Second and goal at the one. See if Whitfield just calls his own number. He will, oh, and he's he in. It. What? Touchdown, LP. Touchdown. Sean Whitfield with a one-yard touchdown run. That is another Town of Country Services touchdown. They do whatever it takes 24-7. Plumbing, electric, heating, and cooling for over 100 years. Go to townofcountryservices.com to find out more. Sean Whitfield. A one-yard touchdown run as LP opens the second half with a very impressive drive all on the ground. That one gets in at 7.41 to go in this third quarter. Cavaliers leading 20-6, to six, and they will go for two here. Well, they were successful on the, on the last time they yep. did that. So, Bunch formation for the Cavs. Whitfield's going to pass. Looking and has a man, Carrico. Oh, he came back that? and got it. Oh, oh. oh Carrico saying, I wish we had instant replay. Yep, there's not much to. Uh, nope. No. The coach is off to check the film on that one. <laughs> but for where we're at, it's hard to tell. So it was a great effort by Carrico to come back and try to get it. Yep. yep. But uh, the official was right there and signals incomplete. So that was a. Uh, Failed two-point conversion, a two-point conversion uh, with Financial Plus Credit Union. They belong to you, and that's the plus at Financial Plus Credit Union in Peru, Ottawa, Mendota, Morris, and Diamond. 20-6, to six, the Cavaliers lead by two scores. That drive lasts four minutes and 19 seconds. Cavaliers uh, got good field position because of the 15-yard personal foul. Yep, right. From to the end, end the of second the second half, the uh, biggest single yep. play was that Carrico run, yep. but Sean Whitfield. Yeah, both of them ran really well that drive. Of course, Carrico had that 30-yard run, and Whitfield had uh, probably close to 30 himself on several different plays. So, between the two of them, they uh, did all the work on that drive. So Shepard will do the kick here. LP kicking as uh, players trying to get in position. Uh, basically, they. Shifted did, sides uh, of the field. Completely changed the side of the field. <laughs> yeah. 20 to 6 LP. 741 to go in the third. Shepard with the walk up. And here is the kick. It's a low, low line drive. 
Taken oh, at the 16. The More, uh, Morton does the reverse again. 25, 30, and he's out past the 35. Still going, still going. Out to the LP 45 yard line. Wow, what a run back. And guess who, I guess that was Glatz. No yep, wonder. So that makes sense. Yep. Well, you wonder if he normally returns kicks or it's just a case where we're down two scores, we need something to happen. Right. So Glatz will stay out there, obviously. And he returned it all the way to the 46-yard line of Morton. And he won't get any time off. He'll get right back out there as their main running back. Yeah, it just seems to be hard to take down. They uh, yep. just pumps those legs continually. Their quarterback is Lane Kaufman, a senior. Glatz is a senior as well. Oh, boy, our first penalty, and it's going nope, against. It's going to be on Morton. False yep. start once again, illegal procedure. Yep. Back official saw it, pointed at it. Yeah. And that's a five-yard walk-off, so they did not fix that problem at a half, did Morton. That's okay. And they'll move the Potters back to their own 41-yard line. First and 15. Seven and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Kaufman going to pass. Is he it? And sacked. Oh, wonderful play. They brought the blitz. Joey Shepard. Joey Shepard, yeah, came busting through and hit Kaufman and brings him down for the big loss. Wow. Yeah, that's a five-yard loss, and he was not touched. Shepard with a big sack for LP. And it is now second down and 21 for the Potters. They'll go no huddle. <clears throat> oh, LP's got to call LP. a timeout. It's, early, uh, it's an early timeout. Yeah. So I, maybe they were thrown off. I mean, Morton's done the no huddle offense in the first half. So the Cavaliers should not be all that surprised by it. But a big sack. That's a great defensive play by Shepard. The first sack of the evening for the LP yep. Cavaliers. 21, or 20 to 6, LP with the lead over Morton. All the momentum on the Cavalier side right now. It is quiet down in front of us on the Morton. Yeah, you couldn't have started this uh, no. third quarter any better. And it is good to get the uh, home field uh, crowd out of yes. the game. LP fans across the way from us. We're on the home side in the press box. I think and we're on a pretty the good crowd, too. I'm trying to think of the way we came in. I'm, I'm off. Maybe to use the compass on the phone to find out where exactly we are directional-wise. Here's Kaufman throwing over the middle. Oh, he threw it behind him, and he caught it. The big tight end with a big catch out towards midfield. Hudson Struby. And all he gets a lot of the yardage 45. back. Wow, all the way, only about a yard away. 20-yard uh, pass. Lynch with the tackle. Third down and one now, and Morton quickly. Oh, oh what a hit. play. Number Chris 21, Wayne. Swain in the backfield. Chris Swain just hammers. Byron Seth for Glass. Dunn uh, cleaned it up there in the backfield, so loss of three yards. It's good to see Byron. I uh, thought maybe he would have been ejected, but nope, he stays in there. Wow, what a hit by Swain. And Glatz knocked for a loss. Yeah, you don't see that too often, but uh, great play by the Cavalier defense. Fourth and four. Morton's going for it. Four receivers. You watch out for the hard count. Kaufman back. Throws. Incomplete. Oh, the receiver fell down. And he threw behind him, too. Yep. Incomplete. A big, big turnover on downs. Big stop by the LP defense. And a turnover on downs. The Cavaliers take the ball back. With 5.53 to go here in the third, it's 20 to 6. LP with the lead. And just so you know, we are on the north side of the field. All and, right. Uh, okay. The uh, fans are for the LP are on the south side. Thank, Thank you, Thank you, Mike. iPhone Compass. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever used my Compass app on the iPhone. No, that's Comes true. in handy, though. That's why Mike is going to lead me out of here. Obviously, he probably not, he's probably not going to trust me to get going the right direction when we leave. So that's why I have my trusty name. No, I, I don't me. know. Up another uh, wow, timeout, timeout on the field. This, LP with another timeout. Oh, boy. Well, LP's only got one timeout now. 
Wow. So I don't know if they didn't have the right personnel out there. Yeah, it looks like there's some confusion. Uh, looks like a lineman coming yeah. in. 5.53 to go in the third quarter. The Cavaliers on top of Morton, 20-6 to six here on opening night. Cavaliers will be home next week against Metamora. In fact, it'll be the first of three home games. First Metamora, then Ottawa, then Sandwich. You know, actually, I'm looking over on the training table. It does look like uh -oh. Trayvon Hunter is uh, stretching over there. So yeah. uh, maybe some cramping. Uh, Malik yeah. Madrigal's over there, too. So it, it, like you said earlier, it is very warm down there. So uh, they really have to keep drinking that water. Yeah, we saw quite a few players in the freshman game uh, yeah. seeming to cramp up. Obviously, it was even warmer uh, when that game was being played. There's Carrico off left tackle. Matt bursts through the line of scrimmage and gets it down to the Morton 46-yard line. Another six yards. We'll take it. Six yards on a first down carry. Six yard gain, second down and four. You'd love to see another time consuming drive here for the Cavaliers. They've had the ball most of the second half. Second down and four for the Cavaliers. 5.20 to go in the third. There's Carrico again, and he's going to be stopped about a yard short. They give him forward yeah, progress. Five, Probably a long yeah. yard, maybe a yeah, yard looks and a like half. Yeah, a little bit over a yard there. Oh, Carrico's coming up limping. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah, Carrico limping. Going to need help. Oh, man, that's that's tough. Uh, Carrico with 100 yards tonight and needs a little assistance to get off the field, so Carrico will go to the training table. LP lineman limping off the field as well. That's uh, Jose Busto, 58. So uh, another, hopefully it's uh, just cramps. Yep, Raymond Miller, number 51, coming in for Bustos. And like so, you, and Cavaliers only have one more timeout, so they really yeah. can't. Uh, Is there maybe an official timeout taken here? Yep. So now the clock will go as we're under five minutes. Third down and one. Chris Swain comes in for Carrico. And they're going to go to Swain, and Chris has got the first down. He's going to have the first down. He may get yeah. pushed back, but. Yep, forward progress near the 41. He needed one and got two. Nothing fancy. Nope. Big, big boys up front. They're doing the job tonight. Are the big hosses up the middle, up front for the yep, Cavaliers? that's all they need to do. Yeah, you got Miller in there now. Belsky, McCormick, Van Duzer on the line. Some big guys up there for the Cavaliers. Whitfield, the option pitch to Walker. Walker turns the corner. Corey gets it inside to 35 right at the LP sideline. Knocked out of bounds. Gain of about five, maybe six. No, it looks like, uh, yeah. Haven't seen good Corey six uh, run the ball all that much. No, he's had a couple of those runs where it yeah. got called back on holding. Yeah. So his stats aren't there, but uh, he's definitely been productive. Second down and four for the Cavaliers. He stayed in bounds, so the clock running under four minutes to go into third. One receiver, Robleski, split out to the left. Whitfield under center for the Cavs. Walker oh, goes I in motion. LP, false start. Yep. Yep. start. Yep. Looked you like the that, left, uh, left end for the Cavaliers. Yep, that running back on that side of the field was kind of leaning Story, too far. I think. So. Joey Story got a head start. So it'll be a five yard walk off. Yep. Second down and nine coming up for the Cavs. Clock is running. 10 seconds left on the play clock. Be about three minutes to go in the third once this play is over. There's a handoff. Swain, Chris is inside the 35. Gets all that penalty yardage back, plus a little bit more. So nice run, nice run for Chris Swain. Nine yard run there. Yep. Eight yards, eight yards. So now you're looking at a third and one. 
And LP now looking at this is a two down or four down territory. Yep. Third down and one at the Morton 32. They are just sucking the life out of the Morton, the team, and their fans here in this third quarter. Yeah, the defense is going to get really tired here pretty soon. Whitfield hands it off. Swain going to be stood up and pushed back. He's not going to get the first down. This is kind of reminiscent of those Geneseo teams. Yeah. Where they just, just bleed you dry on yep. offense, you know. Methodical, I guess would be a good yep. word to say. So let's see the crowd's trying to get the yep. uh, players uh, pumped up a little bit here. Yeah, they sense it. They, this is a big play for Morton. Fourth down and one. The Cavaliers at the Potter 32-yard line. Counting down to two minutes to go in this third quarter. Yeah, this has been a very quick third quarter. See what the Cavaliers do here. you got to thank uh, Whitfield. We'll have the ball one way or another. Actually, Whitfield's out of the Oh, game. look at this. What's the Boudreaux was under center. Defensive and he got, line is hopping over the yeah. offensive line. First down, Cavaliers. And that was Boudreaux, Mike, under center. Maybe that's his special You know what? Team. Actually, now that you say that, I have seen number 15 out yep. of these last couple of plays. So well, Hopefully Whitfield's um, not Whitfield injured. Whitfield might be on the sidelines, too. Wow. So it looks like we possibly have a backup uh, running back and a backup quarterback yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. So some injuries for the Cavaliers here. We saw Carrico limp off. Yeah, I never saw Woodfield leave, but he's definitely not in there. Man. And Boudreaux going to run the option, and he keeps it. And a nice run by the backup quarterback. He gets it inside the 20. Down to the Morton 19-yard line, and just like that, the Cavaliers are in the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. Illinois Valley Credit Union now offering Visa cards with interest rates as low as 9.9%. If you live, work, or worship in LaSalle, Bureau, or Putnam County, you can become an IVCU member. See more now at IVCU.com. Yeah, we're under a minute now. Wow, what a quarter for the Cavs here. Dominating Morton. Brendan Boudreaux at quarterback. A sophomore. And he hands it off to Swain. I think that's going to be close to a first down. Yeah. Yep, that's a first down. Needed two and got three. 40 clock uh, momentarily stops with 40 seconds to go. First down wow. For the Cavaliers from the Morton 16. Clock running now. Probably, boy, LP can run it all the way down here. Yeah, it's going to be about a the second last difference. play of the uh, third quarter here. Yeah, it looks like there's a one-second difference. Hopefully they realize that Well, so they don't get the penalty. Again, we got a uh, sophomore quarterback in there right now. Yeah, let's see what kind of uh, moxie he has here. I see two Cavalier players just they, off the sideline getting some treatment like, like they are cramping up. Right. Uh, Carrico's out. Whitfield is out. Mike mentioned Trayvon Hunter was getting some treatment. And there was Swain up the middle, not a lot there. Oh, he didn't give up on the play, but the nope, whistle's they blow. The play dead, so no gain on the play. The Cavaliers absolutely dominate that third quarter. They have the ball, the majority of it. And with one quarter to go, the Cavaliers are 12 minutes away from opening up their season with a nice road win over Morton. Some work still to do, though. 20 to 6 LP over the Potters. You're listening to LP Cavalier Football on 1039 WLPO and online at uh, starrockmedia.com and click the link to WLPO Listen Live. Field, you've got the rest of the game to make up for it. When something breaks down at home, you need prompted professional service. That's why at Town & Country Services, their phones are manned 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to ensure that your problems and questions with plumbing, heating, and cooling are all taken care of promptly and professionally. Town & Country Services offer free estimates and affordable rates. Their licensed professionals and friendly staff have been a staple in the Illinois Valley since 1919. Give them a call anytime in Tonica at 815-442-3415 or Princeton at 815-872-2200. Start your
your day with Rod and Tom. Then get updates throughout the day on 1039 WLPO. Star Block News Talk and Classic Rock. Jeremy Aiken and Mike Porter back here at Morton High School. Uh, fourth quarter now, 20 to 6. The Cavaliers lead the Morton Potters, and LP has it inside the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. So it looks like they have it at the 16-yard uh, line. Just so you note here, Morton only had the ball for four plays in the third quarter. Wow. Yeah, that was uh, one of the more impressive quarters I've seen from LP in a long time. Now, they only got one score, but, man, it was just impressive to see. And, you know, good news, Mike. I see Carrico back out there. Yep, number five is that's out, great. so that's good. Trayvon's out there too, Hunter. So that's good news. So uh, hopefully Whitfield gets taken care of, and who knows, maybe you ride Boudreaux the rest of the way here and let Whitfield rest. Yeah, I'm not really seeing Whitfield on the sidelines over there, so I'm not really sure. He's standing up. I is do he? see him now. Okay. Yeah, he's standing up. Oh, there he up. is, yep. So back in action, the Cavaliers have it, a second down and 10 at the 16 of Morton. Hunter goes in motion. Boudreaux with a pitch to Trayvon. Trayvon turns it in. Oh, look at that. Touchdown, LP. Yeah, yep. <laughs> Touchdown, LP. First play of the fourth quarter. Boudreaux with the pitch to Trayvon Hunter. We've been waiting for Trayvon to break one tonight, and he does there 16 yards away. And some late whistles here. Oh, there's yep, another someone's injury. Hurt there on Morton's side. He's just slow getting up. Trayvon uh, turned the corner, and he had a, had a steam going there. Nothing was stopping him. That is another ton of country services touchdown. Doing whatever it takes 24-7. Plumbing, electric, heating, and cooling for over 100 years. Go to tonofcountryservices.com to find out more. LP up 26-6 over the Morton Potters. The injured player for Morton is uh, Noah Losey. He's a lineman, only a sophomore. He's, uh, he's walking off the field, so he yep. looks okay. LP will go for two again here. Carrico, Walker are the backs along with Story. Boudreaux under center, the sophomore. He's going to pass. Throwing oh. to the corner of the end zone. Robleski catch is made. It's good two for the two-point conversion. Point conversion. Good for Tyler Robleski. So he lofted it up, and Robleski was waiting for quite a while for the pass to come down. And the Cavaliers had two more points. 28-6 wow. to six LP, and that is a successful Financial Plus Credit Union two-point conversion. They belong to you, and that's the plus at Financial Plus Credit Union in Peru, Ottawa, Mendota, Morris, and Diamond. LP leading 28-6 to six over Morton. We'll keep it right here. And, uh, man, what a second half here for LP. Hey, and you know what? Honestly, in that, sec in that third quarter, um, I don't believe LP had a penalty. I maybe think one, one maybe, maybe one, one penalty, like a fall, false start. I think another yeah, false start. So they, yeah. made, they did some sort of adjustment there. So, But uh, Morton's going to have a hard time uh, running the ball coming in the fourth quarter with their stud running back down uh, 22 points. Yeah, you may have to go to the air when you're down 28-6 with <laughs> 11.52 to go. Now right. they can still get Glatz involved through the air right. as they have I mean, tonight. The uh, game is not out of hand right nope. now, so... So here's Shepard, who had uh, the defensive play of the game, one could argue, with a sack. Probably that and the uh, Whitfield interception as right. well would be up there. Ooh, now they do squib a squib kick. kick. Oh. I wonder if they put Glatz back there and no LP return. wanted no part of it. They yep. did. He was in there. Yeah, he was there. So good idea for the Cavaliers. Uh, they're in the position, the power, uh, power position right here. No need to let Glatz nope. return a kick and energize this Morton crowd because they are, uh, they've are they been tuned out here in the second half thanks to the Cavaliers. So first and 10, Morton at their own 34-yard line. Mike mentioned they've only had four offensive plays in this second half. They had a fourth down attempt, and it was an incomplete pass. Right. Four receivers for Morton. And Kaufman going to pass, throws, oh. and almost was tipped. By Verdun, the ball is caught. Oh, the ball is off And it was stripped. Cavaliers and have LP the ball. It. Turnover. Looked like with the strip and recovery, Mike, was Antonio Rodriguez. Rodriguez with the uh, recovery. Wow. Well, I tell you, that defense is showing uh, its teeth today. Causing the turnovers, the good old takeaways. 
That's kind of Charles Tillman right there back yep. in the day. Antonio yep, Rodriguez with the force fumble and the fumble recovery. Yep, Jackson Weber with the fumble. Cavaliers, 28 to six. Everything going right for LP here in the second half. And now they'll try to run some more clock and we see Sean Whitfield back in the game. So great, okay. great news all around here. Might have been just cramping. Whitfield's gonna pass. Sean's rolling right, still looking, throwing, nope. and he one hopped the intended receiver. And that was kind of Hernandez. Surprised the Cavs are passing. Yeah. Ozzie Hernandez was open. Took a long time, though, for uh, Whitfield to finally pull the trigger. It does stop the clock at 11.33. You know, no need to, uh, you know, possible throw interception or return for a touchdown kind of thing. So, interesting the Cavs decide to pass. They didn't pass hardly at all that third oh. quarter. So, I suspect this will be a run. Whitfield back in the game. Nice job by yeah, Boudreau, Boudreau. Did a fine job. And that is Carrico up the middle, just a couple for Matt. I think Whitfield actually kept or Whitfield, that one. yep, you're right. Matt, uh, yep. Sean Whitfield. Sean Whitfield on the keeper will give one yard on the play. Just one on the carry. Most important thing for LP at this point is just uh, nobody get hurt and run this clock out. Yep. Third and nine for LP at the Morton 39 yard line. 11 minutes to go in the ball game. 28 to six, LP with the lead over Morton. Whitfield back under center for the Cavs. In motion is Corey Walker. Walker's gonna get the pitch and breaks the first Boy. tackle. Corey spins. Over there. Yeah, he is, and he gets down to about the 35 yard line. See where they mark, and they actually say he went out before the 35. Put him back at the 37-yard line, gain of only three. Boy. Tough spot. Cavaliers looking at a fourth down here. Clock is stopped at 10.39. They're going to go for it. See if they maybe find Robleski. Malik Madrigal is in there as well. Whitfield's going to pass. Passing. Looking for Madrigal going deep. going deep. Oh, just oh, off Madrigal's boy. fingertips. Would have been six. And Malik is uh, shaken up. I think he landed a little awkwardly. Yeah. Oh, he's up now. There limping a bit. Yep, he's just limping off. So looks like he's okay. So LP was close to putting another six on the board there. Whitfield just beyond the outstretched hands of Malik Madrigal as they went for it all. 10.32 to go, it's 28 to six LP. Well, you can't say anything, but they're not aggressive here. <laughs> right, all right, they're not playing to, uh, basically not to lose, they're still playing to win. No prevent offense if there was such a thing there. Four receivers for Morton. And they're gonna go to Glatz. He goes up the middle. And he fumbled. I think LP's got it. He fumbled it. Ethan LP Bell has the ball. Ethan Bell forced the fumble. And uh, looking to see who recovered it. Looked like Ethan Bell, I think, recovered it. Big guy down on the bottom of the pile for LP was Nicholas, Nicholas Belsky, Belsky. But, uh, yeah, their superstar fumbles it. Nothing going right for Morton. No, he was, uh, I think he was trying to talk to the official saying that he might have been down, but I think that was a tr true fumble. Yep. Fourth turnover for Morton. So back to LP with the ball. So let's see LP run some uh, clock off. Yes. Right at midfield. 28 to six and LP forcing the fourth turnover of the night against the Morton Potters. And that'll put Potter Starr, who's not at all happy. Uh, uh, no, Seth Glatz not. throwing some stuff down on the sideline. Talking to his quarterback. So Cavaliers right at midfield, first and 10, as some Morton faithful start heading for the exits. 
Whitfield's going to keep it, and Sean gets a yard or two. Just hold on to the ball. You know, Morton's going to be trying to strip it. Yep. Number 10, Sean Whitfield. I need a check of a Subway scoreboard update. Yeah, Ottawa. Some, uh, some scores have been coming through yeah, here. Yeah, Ottawa over Sandwich 42-14 to 14 in the fourth. Amboy Lamoyal final 52-0 over Peoria Heights. Orion on top of Hall 26-7 in the fourth. Mendota and Erie Prophetstown in a barn burner. 24 all in the fourth quarter. Streeter and East Peoria 14-12 in the third. And last check, St. Bede was close to running the clock, leading Sherrard 38-0. Back in action here. And there's a handoff up the middle. I think it was Carrico once again. Hard to tell. Yep, Carrico with the carry. Three yards. And Matt comes up limping again. May just want to let Matt sit the rest of this one out. Looks yeah. like he's cramping again. Yeah, I think that's what that is. Yep. So Carrico gets another three yards to add to his totals tonight. But uh, he's going to go out with a cramp. It's to be third down and seven for LP. More importantly, we're down to nine minutes left to go in the ball game. Yep, clock is not stopping, so. Whitfield, the handoff. Oh. Swain, I believe. Nope, nope. That Tra was Trayvon, uh, Trayvon Hunter. Hunter. Ran up the middle down to the 46-yard uh, line. One-yard gain on the play for Trayvon. So fourth and six coming up for LP. Going to be about eight and a half minutes to go in this ball game when LP. Uh, I would think you'd want to punt it here, honestly, and try to pin yeah, why uh, not, Morton right? down. You know, why, uh, you know, fourth and six. Maybe that's what they're doing, Mike. They're going to take it all the way down and call a timeout and then punt it. Yeah, you would think they, that's what they would do. Yep. Yeah, there'll be about 8-12 to go, about 8. Yeah, I think that's Joey what they're Shepard's doing. Joey Shepard's been, uh, was, yep. during warm-ups, he was doing some good punting there, so. Yep. Let's take a timeout as well. Let's step aside real quick. 28 to 6 LP, fourth quarter, fourth down coming up. You're listening to Cavalier Football on 1039 WLPO. brings our community together to remember friends and family we have lost to substance use. The Rock is this Saturday and will feature speakers, a butterfly release, and a memory list. Search Buddy's Purpose on Facebook to find out more, then join Buddy's Purpose Overdose Awareness Walk Saturday morning at 10 in Cherry. Support compassion, not stigma. That's Buddy's Purpose. If Tom Petty, Bob Seger, and John Mellencamp are some of your favorite players, stick around after the game. 1039 WLBO, Starved Rock News, Talk, and Classic Rock. Jeremy Aiken and Mike Porter back, and LP did punt. Joey Shepard with the punt. It was bobbled by Morton, and they were able to fall on it. But uh, the Potters are backed up uh, about their own 20-yard line, just inside their own 20. Kaufman going to throw a quick hit, incomplete. Nowhere near the receiver, uh, Tyson Hart. Just a quick hit. And uh, as you can imagine, the body language not real good right now for Morton. No, and I'm not really sure. Obviously, this is Morton's first game, but I, I think they're probably used to having uh, running the ball much more <laughs> often than passing. Yeah, Glatz last year had two games where he ran for more than 300 yards. Well, I think the stat there is like 16 touchdowns in right. five games or three games. Unbelievable. Just crazy stats. Kaufman going to throw. They run the screen. And nice pursuit for LP by Antonio Rodriguez. Oh, there's a Cavalier player down in the way back away from the uh, oh, yeah. probably He's more cramping. Wasn't even on the play, it doesn't look like. More cramping. That's Whitfield, Whitfield again. again. Yeah. The coach Jose Medina out. Maybe you give Whitfield the rest of this game off, too. I mean, some yeah. of these Cavalier players struggling. That's my guess is the. Yeah, because he probably just cramped up. Yep. Uh, <laughs> it's 
So we got an official's timeout, 28 to six. Let's take another timeout, an injury timeout. We're at 7.38 to go in the fourth quarter. LP leading Morton 28 to six. Back with more Cavalier football after this on 103.9 WLPO. and questions with plumbing, heating, and cooling, all taken care of promptly and professionally. Town & Country Services offer free estimates and affordable rates. Their licensed professionals and friendly staff have been a staple in the Illinois Valley since 1919. Give them a call anytime in Tonica at 815-442-3415 or Princeton at 815-872-2200. A, a tradition of news and sports. 103.9 WLPO. Star Block News Talk and Classic Rock. And a nice hand from uh, nice Glenn Faithful uh, is uh, Whitfield uh, will uh, uh, go off the field. Off the my field. guess is Sean's night is over. Sean with two touchdown with runs two and touchdown interceptions. Run interception. Definitely in play, I would think, for our, uh, our uh, Pru Federal Savings Bank player of the game. Oh, and nice play the oh, nice play the backfield. Four. Will Doherty. Yeah, Will Doherty broke yeah, that play up. Not, not much there for their stud running back last. And in fact, and they're going to get him up. They're still going to give him a first down. They only had to get the first down. They had a nice play. Yeah, and if you're LP right yeah, now, you're yeah, if you're LP right now, Mike, you're finally giving up three yards. And Kaufman going to throw. Gonna throw. Looking, deep. Looking deep. Looking deep. Out and, and incomplete. And incomplete. Oh, nice attempt there. Oh, yeah. Nice, yeah. Uh, nice uh, dive. Dive. By, uh, by uh, Hudson Struby. He's had a couple Struby. nice catches. Yeah, couple nice catches. Yeah, couple earlier. Earlier. Including a touchdown. Including a touchdown. Six foot five. Six foot five. So that's a nice target that's to have nice as a wide receiver. Struby for Morton. And the clock does stop, 7.04. The 28 to six. Notice in the second half, uh, I don't think they were doing that in the first half, Mike, where they were there playing music after every down, the uh, press box. Are you, you planning to do that at LP? I don't know, I'll have to yeah? see how the band, because okay. I'd really try to get the band to right, uh, right. do as much as they can. There's a runoff left tackle, not a whole lot there. Glatz and Tony Rodriguez again with a tackle. Rodriguez has been very active from the linebacker spot for LP tonight. Third and three coming up for Morton. Most importantly, the clock running. Six and a half minutes to go in this game, 28 to six LP. There's Glatz again, and he's not gonna get the first down. Looks like Antonio Rodri yep. Rodriguez was in on the play. Rodriguez was there. Swain was there. Also in the area for the Cavs was uh, Gage Starkey. Was Gage there, Starkey, yep. yep. Another we defensive about lineman. A whole host of Cavaliers. We meant it. Fourth down and two for Morton. This is a uh, last gasp for the Potters offensively here. If they don't get it, LP could really just run this game out. 28 to six LP. Kaufman fakes the handoff, throwing. And oh, it's nice caught. catch. Yeah, nice very catch. nice catch for the first down. Nice catch. Over the shoulder catch by uh, Tyson Hart. Yeah. Yeah, the pass was high. Yeah, and was Hart nice brought it down. Potters move it out to their 49-yard line, giving their faithful a little something to cheer about here. And here's a handoff up the middle. Not much there. Glatz runs into three or four Cavalier defenders. Boy, they're getting the music going they right really, after. Yeah, they really cue it, don't they? Let's give Will Doherty that tackle. Second down and nine for Morton at uh, the 49 yard line of LP. We're down to five minutes to go in the ball game. Here's Glatz, oh, he's in right the secondary, the 40, 35, 30. 
brought down at the LP 25 yard line. So he's getting his numbers here late in the game. 24 yard run on that play. And he's a bit gassed. He's uh, got his hands at his side, was bending over a little bit. So uh, it's a warm night and he's played a lot of football tonight. First and 10, Morton at the LP 24 yard line. Kaufman gonna give it back to Glatz. He's got a hole, 20, 15, 10. Looking towards the end zone, touchdown, Morton. So he does get some of his numbers and gets a touchdown. 24 yard run for Glatz at 432 of the fourth quarter. So Morton gets some uh, a moral victory of sorts there where they get their superstar running back into the end zone. And it's yeah, 28 to 12. Uh, the uh, Glatz show there, 80 yards on that drive. He's in there on this two point conversion. Be nice to stop him here, keep it at 16. They go back to Glatz and he gets in. So LP maintains a two touchdown lead, 28 to 14. I would watch for an onside kick here if I'm LP. Yeah. Because Morton is desperate down two touchdowns, and Coach Jose Medina, I think that's what he's telling his guys. He's out there on the field, putting the hands guys, I'm sure, up and up in front. 4.32 to go in this game. Yeah, you know Morton's going to be doing everything they can to uh, get the ball back here, so... Make sure the ball goes 10 yards. Yep. So you got Trayvon's up front. Boudreaux's up front. Chris Swain is up there. Yeah. Verdun is out there. Luke Murtis. So. Yeah, LP, uh, they have nobody deep. They're figuring this is an onside kick coming here. And you can tell he's lining up for it. No, it's not. It's a little different than the pros. The ball's live. I think wow. they got it. Oof. They are close. lucky to get it. It looked like uh, Tom Zebron. Thomas Zebron fell on it. That was a live football. And you get this turf, Mike, and it takes yeah. some odd bounces. Well, you know, and I think in the pros, they're not supposed to run until they actually kick the well. ball, I guess. Uh, that rule does not apply here in high school, <laughs> it appears. They were running right as the uh, official blew the whistle, so. So Cavs are lucky to get the ball, but they have it first and 10 from their own uh, 45. Zebron with uh, the catch on the uh, onside kick and Seems got an to official. Be a little bit of a question mark here, but. Uh, so Boudreaux will come back out for LP at quarterback. Yep, it's going to be the Brendan Boudreaux show for the rest of the game, I would imagine. Need a couple first downs here. Hold on to the football if you're LP. We don't have Carrico either. Swain is the fullback. And Swain goes up the middle, gets it out past the 45-yard line. Four, looks like a four-yard game. So they mark it at the 49. We'll take it, four yards. Second down and six for the Cavaliers. Cavaliers are going to take as much time yep. as possible here. Under four minutes to go now, 15 seconds on the game clock. Trying to force Morton to start taking some timeouts. Yep, they have all three. Boudreaux, a sophomore, has been uh, very steady at quarterback. Now they're just quick handoff to Swain and he gets maybe three more. Down about the 48-yard line of Morton. Gain of three. Third and three LP at the Potter 48-yard line. And they can wind it down all the way to three minutes before they snap this football. 
In motion is Walker. Boudreaux going to run the option. Oh, he's, he's got, got the first, first down. down. Big play by Boudreaux. That one probably puts it away. The sophomore quarterback pressed into action tonight. Boudreaux with a big carry on a third down quarterback keeper. Yeah, I think that's going to pretty much do it there, yep. I would think. Now you wonder if Morton will even bother using your timeouts. We'll see. 20 seconds on the play clock, so LP can take this down under two and a half minutes to go. 28-14 to 14 LP over Morton. The Cavaliers looking to move their program winning streak to six on the varsity level. That's got to be up there on the LP history uh, uh, back in the day. I'm sure they did the right. things like that, but it's been a while. recent history. Yep. Looks like a false start just for good measure, yep. Mike. Yep. Got to get another one going. <laughs> and that will stop the clock, unfortunately, at 2.23 to go. It's be first and 15 now for LP back at the Morton 48-yard line. The LP Clock just trying, once again, yep, so. trying to run it out. Be ex pretty much almost exactly two minutes when they snap yep. this football. No two-minute warnings in high school. Boudreaux, uh -oh, uh oh he's no, in no, trouble. No, no, no. no! Threw it up for grabs. Now, they should say, is that a pass? They're going to say it's a fumble? I don't know. I think they're calling it a fumble, but... Of course, there's no uh, oh. re instant replay or whatnot, so I don't think the officials are going to change that. So Boudreaux was in trouble, and instead of just taking the loss, he threw it up for grabs. Unfortunately, yeah, he's lucky it actually hit the ground because that could have been intercepted. Yeah, and run, by, run back there. So, so it goes as a fumble, but given Morton life, mm. not something this. The uh, sophomore quarterback wants to do. He'll have to learn from that one. 157 to go. Morton with the ball at the LP 43 yard line. Kaufman rolling right, looking, throws. He's got a man at the 30. And he'll step out of bounds for a first down. That's his favorite target, Hudson Struby. Down to the LP 26. Wow, 150 left, and they still got three timeouts. Yeah, it's definitely not over now. Kaufman with Glatz in the backfield. LP trying to stay on, not giving up five yards here. Kaufman going to throw, looking over the middle. It's caught, and Ooh, he's hammered hit. down. That big was Trayvon hit by Hunter. Trayvon Hunter. Short they of do. the first down. Yep, gain of nine down to the L or the LP 17 yard line. Clock running, a minute and a half to go in the ball game. Kaufman back. Throwing over the middle. Oh, oh. Most intercepted off the fingertips of Mason Lynch. He threw behind his receiver, and it was behind Lynch as well. Yeah, he was the receiver was open. Jackson over the middle. Was. So third and one now for Morton at the 17 of LP. Two down or four down territory here. Kaufman going to throw, He's throwing over the end zone. end zone. Dropped. He dropped. Oh! Call pass interference. Man, did he wait forever to throw that flag? Late penalty. He flag. waited to see if he dropped the football and threw the flag. He literally waited to see if he dropped that football and threw the flag. The ball fell incomplete, and the flag came way late on a pass know, interference. One might be, oh, Unbelievable. He waited to see that ball go incomplete. Wow. Are they? Oh, they're calling it a touchdown? What? The ball was dropped. What is the call here? The ref no. pass interference on LP, which would be a goal-to-goal -goal situation. Well, Very it's not, questionable. It's not like the pros, where it's going to be first and goal right. one. So. Very questionable that it was even a pass interference. 
the ball, the play played out. When the ball came loose, then the official threw the flag. So Morton's going to have it first and goal inside the LP10 at the nine-yard line. 120 to go in the game. This one is turned in the way closer than it should be. First and goal at the nine. They're going to go Glatz. And he is reaching for the end zone, gets in, touchdown from nine yards out. Wow. 113 to go. Morton, who was hanging their heads, looking like they were going to give up on this one. Yeah. Give them credit. They have fought back and stayed in this. And uh, behind Glatz in a big pass interference call. Are back within eight, one possession a game now. 28 to 20. There's the kick, it's up, plenty of leg, it's good. Morton with uh, two scores in the last, so oh, three minutes yeah, and 19 seconds. Well, here's an interesting call, Mike. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do an onside kick if you're Morton because you do have three timeouts. Yeah, you know, honestly, I, I think know it's risky do not doing it, but deep and hopefully right. the defense holds them and then uh, right. you know, potentially get good field position. So, if you do an onside kick, you're going to give LP potentially the ball at the you know 40, 45 yard line. So, yeah, with those three timeouts, that's uh, that's big for Morton. So, a big turnover by LP uh, got Morton back into this football game. 28 to 21. Yeah, it looks like the uh, kicker setting up for that onside kick yep. once again. I mean, they were pretty close on that they last were. one. LP's got to be a little bit more aggressive on uh, trying to get the ball. Don't let it roll. As soon as they, it gets to them, pick up the, you know, recover it. 28 to 21 is the score. LP was rolling just minutes ago. Here's the onside kick. LP gets it. That's huge. Yep, good play by number 32, Joey Story. Story. Calm, cool, and collected right there with Story. So here we go. Uh, Morton's got all timeouts. So if they can stop LP, they will take their timeouts. Yeah, LP's just got to get one first down. LP's got to get one first down. And do it, though, with Whitfield back in the game. So that's big. And we'll see if Carrico's back. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think. Nope, oh, Chris Swain in the backfield. He's been doing a strong uh, run yep. the last uh, couple of plays here. So, Whitfield, though, back under center for the Cavs. And they go Swain. There's a nice first down carry yep. inside midfield. And he's past midfield. And the linesman, okay, there we go. Timeout, Morton, 108 to go. It'll be second down at about six. Morton uses their first timeout of the half. LPs used all of their timeouts. Used them yeah, pretty early. Have to watch the uh, clock to see how that runs. <laughs> just, uh, just to keep an eye on that. So we are now to almost to the 10 o'clock hour here on uh, AM 1220, FM 103.9 WLPO, LaSalle, Peru, Oglesby. LP holding on for dear life, uh, leading Morton 28 to 21. The Potters have got quick uh, two quick scores here in the fourth quarter to make up 15 points in a hurry. LP needs a first down to put this one away. So Second and six. Who's going to make the big play? Morton. Yep. Need somebody to step up. And there's Swain, and he gets Another probably good run there. Probably four more. Six seconds. So he gets another four yards in this next play. That'll be a first down. Down to the 47 yard line of Morton. One timeout left now for Morton. Long third and three. One oh two to go in the game. 
Yeah, a lot of fans had left. I wonder how they're thinking there. Yeah. I don't know if Morton has a radio station. Probably not to uh, listen to it on the drive home. We're glad you're listening to LP coverage here on 103.9 FM, 1220 AM WLPO, and listening on our website, on our uh, app as well, WLPO. Watching video and listening as well on our Star Rock Media YouTube channel. Hello back in the valley here as we reach 10 o'clock. LP, if they get a first down, the game is over. Third down and three. They go back to Swain and Swain is up. He's got oh, a first he down. lunges ahead. Second effort for Chris Second Swain. Second effort by Swain. Nice run by Chris. Another first down. Yards of first down Cavaliers. So that's the ball game. It's going to stop the clock on the uh, first down. They have one timeout. They can take it. There goes the clock. Uh, Morton's just going to let it run. And LP so will take that, knees here. Yep. Wow, a huge third down run by Swain. Man, this one was a uh, <laughs> a nail closer biter. closer than we thought it should have been. but Midway through the fourth, thought we were going to coast this one home. Give Morton credit. They never gave up. LP battling some uh, key injuries in the fourth quarter with uh, Whitfield out, Carrico out as well. Trayvon Hunter has been out a while. Madrigal, we haven't seen him since uh, he was shaken up. And there's a knee by Whitfield. That should be it. That is it. The Cavaliers open their fall season in 2021 with a very nice road win over an always quality program in Morton. LP with a 28 to 21 win over the Potters. Cavaliers 1 and 0. And we're coming back home next week and we'll have three straight home games with the Cavaliers looking to continue this winning streak. We'll be back with some post-game numbers after this on 103.9 WLPO. Cavaliers beat the Potters 28 to 21. New and used vehicle shipments arriving every day. We also have customers.